Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer. And that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Tom. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Hello, friends. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fairly well. Good. Glad to hear it. You know, Tom, uh, after re-watching Dune 2 recently, uh, I decided to go back and watch uh, the original Dune, David Lynch Dune. Okay, first one. Uh mm -hmm. Probably still my favorite one. Uh, just okay. you know, this is what it is. Not that I think even more bad. so, even more so than the the recent the recent run. I think so, for various and sundry reasons. Though I think Villeneuve's version of Dune is absolutely exceptionally good. I just think there's some story changes he made that I would love. But anyways, regardless of all that, they're both amazing, and you can like whatever you like. But as I was thinking about watching those, you know, Tom, the reason that it, it came to my mind was because. Tom, do you know that he who controls the spice controls the universe? And today the spice will certainly flow because we're going to be talking about uh, the removed models thing as well as other AOS 4 news. So, I mean, uh, is that spice or salt? No, it's spice. It's spicy. Spicy takes. It's oh, spicy. spicy takes. It's a spicy I see, I see, the, I see where you go. I, I see how you got there. Mm, um, we had to walk all I don't the way, know. but it was fun. I don't, I don't know. Like, I have thoughts clearly uh, this sure. is the, you know this this hits home you know and, and we'll get to that but at the same time uh i mean is it really a surprise uh depends yes some certainly uh i mean okay. it, again it depends on different perspectives yeah. of course and things like that yep. and how tuned in people yeah. are we'll get but, to that but first the news but first of course the news yes <laughs> that's we're going to be talking about many things today including all the other news which is like actually really exciting and good and, and shared a lot of really awesome stuff that i'm excited about for 4.0 but of course first the news and all our normal fun so let's talk about that rumor engine that very clear rumor engine uh-huh yeah there it is it's a 40k thing i mean are you sure though sure <laughs> It has rounded rivets. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And and like a seemingly fleur de lis type of thing. So it's some kind of Sisters of Battle unit. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Good. Okay. I don't, I, don't, I, don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have uh, uh, Clan Rat models. Boom. Funny story. Boom. I built, I built 20 Clan Rats this week. They did not look like this. Sure. <laughs> Here's a fun thing. <laughs> so I have something like 150, 160 clan rats. I don't know. It's somewhere in that range. Like sure. they get lost over time. So like, I don't know exactly how many I have, but I mean, like I can certainly feel like even now I could feel the under 3.0, I could feel the maximum reinforceable amount of clan rats, right? Sure. So sort of 60, 60, 20 or whatever, kind of the full, the full sauce as it were there. Right. And one of the things I was doing, I finished up a very big project this weekend. And so to, which I'll talk about in a minute, but to reward myself, I cleaned my office. Okay. So like one of the oh. things I like to do is I reward, I reward whenever I finish a very hard project or hard work, I like to reward myself by cleaning and organizing. Um, you, you crack me up. Uh, I mean, I get it. I get it. Uh, but your cleaning and organizing looks very different than what mine does. Why so? Um, just look at your paint racks, son. Like yeah, they're you incredibly obviously... organized by brand, by color tone, <laughs> all in Roy G. Biv. Yeah, what's your point? Um, mine are that they're not on my desk. That's put away. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. yeah. That's just a glimpse. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I mean, there's something rewarding about putting, bringing order to chaos and putting the universe back to how it was. So. Um, at any rate, I was cleaning out my closet because I was sort of reorganizing things in my, my storage area, as I saw you were doing as well recently for, for sort of kits and, and overflow stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, do you know do you know why I'm doing what I'm doing? Uh, I've pulled out spearheads of everything. Oh, there like you go. I've, sure. crea I've created a, uh, like a single bookshelf for the kids and I in prep for this summer. That's how crazy I'm trying to not do other work. Um that I've pulled out a bunch of all the spearheads. And so I've been building and finalizing all of that. I have a bunch of slick blade seekers on my desk right now that are the last group of the, uh, of the stuff that I'm building for those kits for the spearhead stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, awesome. No, Richard, you're not wrong. Uh, the now I say this, this story setup to say that 
when I was going through my sprue, because I, I have like some bins sure. of sprues that are organized by like army and type and stuff. And when I was going through them, I... How many storm vermin do you have? Some more. That was just it. I was shocked <laughs> at how many clan rat sprues I still had. I was like, my God, I still have so many of these. Like I have, I have at least another unit of 40, at least... I didn't bother to count, but I was like, this is at least 40 more clan rats on sprue still. And I'm like, what, what is this? How these are, I've had this for so many years. Um, so I threw away a bunch of stuff and, and, you know, like, like threw like in the trash throw away. Yeah. Not like, it's not stuff on sprue, but bits and stuff okay. I threw away. Okay. That, that, that's what I was concerned about. I was like, really? You threw that stuff away? Um, yeah. It's so funny. Like, I, I mean, was I trying would, to pull... I don't like whatever, but I, I just give them to people rather than throw them away, but I don't need I, them. I've been the recipient of that. You, you <laughs> thrust upon me a bunch of Crypt Guard. You're like, here, I don't need these. I have other alternate sculpts. Take them. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want some clan rats, Tom, next time you're up. They're all yours, buddy. No, uh, I'm pretty sure I have about 80 clan rats of my own. Uh, most of it new on Sprue. At least 40 Storm Vermin. And a bunch of other ridiculous sure. uh, Skaven stuff. So, like, I was digging through trying to find... Um, to see if I had any warp lightning cannons, and uh, I was truly shocked by the amount of scaven that I have. That said, I like these sculpts a lot, a um, lot. I like, like them a lot. I do, I do. But what I'll say is this: like, yes, I like them. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to like qualify them any other way. I do, I like them. Um, having built, what I'll say is this: having built a bunch of Zangor and Arcanite, uh, Arcanites. Yeah, sure. Zangor and. Uh, Caracacolites, um, this last week as well. Um, it dawned on me that I'll bet all of these are all fairly monopose. Like, what you see here is the pose that you get out of the build with maybe a head swap, but the, almost no weapon swaps. Almost all this stuff is going to be static. And I mean, so that will certainly fine. be true for whatever comes in the initial box, because the initial boxes are always UTB kits. But, but here's what I'm saying, is that I was building, like, the Zangor box sprues, not the push to fit. I was building the Karakak lights, and that, I was still running into that problem. There was, like, a weapon swap that I could choose between them. Sure. There was a handful of head swaps, but in general, they were fairly static. And it was just I mean, very the original different. clan rats are two pieces, Tom. It's the clan rat and an arm that sockets in. And, hold on, hold on. And a shield you can glue on the other side. It's oh, actually three. Okay. I just built 20 of them this week, so I know very well. No one um, puts that shield on. I did. I, every single one. And the ones that had hand weapons had the broken shield. And the ones that didn't have hand weapons that had the longer range weapon, the spears, had fully complete shield still. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it has to it has to feel right. No, but sure. I just say that. To, I, I say that just to say that, um, like, I... I, I, know, I recognize how monopose those old sculpts are. I do actually still like them. Like yeah, having just good. built 20 of them. I was like, I, I'm okay with them replacing them with these. But the, but these old ones aren't shabby in any way, shape, or form. No, like, and that's I why not... I kept them all, Tom. Yeah. Because honestly, I could yeah. just use them to fill out the ranks. Like they can just be interspersed amongst the new guys. And I don't think it'll be that huge of a difference. One of the reasons <laughs> I really like these new sculpts is they're still relatively simple. Like obviously you've got the claw, the the... Uh, claw leader up front, the the yep. champion of the unit. This is obviously the command module, right? So musician standard bearer and, and claw leader, or whatever. And uh, you know, like these guys are still relatively straightforward. There's nothing that complicated about what's going on here. Uh, it's still pretty simple. You're still talking about like the ratty bits, the two pieces of cloth, and a little bit of armor, right? So it's it's still a relatively simple paint job. Now, obviously, these are elevated. Um, as far as sure. the, the heavy metal team doing the work, but I think you could still make them look really good in a relatively short amount of time. So, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I like, I like what they're doing. Um, it makes me kind of sad in that we're, we have a bunch of, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what the line refresh looks like. I'll just say that because, um, some of the stuff just may not have had it to go, but we'll see. We'll That's see. what I would say. Yeah. I mean, time will tell. More sculpts, please. Sculpts, please. Like, that's what I want, okay? We want the models. We want yep. the juice. Give me the juice. Yep. You like the juice, huh? I give you the juice. <sighs> okay. So. So. No, Charles, next. we did not. Okay, next uh, news item. Uh, Gold Demon commended entries. Yeah, I wanted to highlight um, a couple. They put up an article here. 
I would recommend people go check it out. I'll put put it down in the show notes. Um, but I would recommend people go check out the commended entries. Uh, it's always good to look at the winners and stuff. Obviously, that's an accomplishment, an incredible accomplishment. But frankly, getting to commend it is really, really hard. And um, I just like there were several in the commended category that I really, really loved. Um, for example, this one, I, I, I harvested just a few from the article that I really liked that I that I saw at the show that I thought that looks really cool. Um, I really liked Andy's um, Eldar unit here, and I don't really like Eldar. Like, I have no love whatsoever of Eldar. I just thought he treated these really nicely. Um, like, the subtle blues and the white helmet, just the red looks really rich. It's just a nice overall piece, uh, and I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the the three guys standing on rocks and dirt, very popular in, uh, in 40k unit. Uh, Richard Gray's vampire unit, which is like put together just from a bunch of different vampires from mm-hmm. different, obviously, you know, Cato and the Ascurgan or whatever, just, just fun, different things. Uh, God, I love those Ascurgan. I know. Right. Yeah. Like it just, it's just a really cool unit. Um, I love the, if, if you notice the little skull spider web freehand on, yep. uh, lady, what Kritza or whatever her name is, um, just thought it was a super cool uh unit overall really really struck me in person i thought it looked really cool and then this is uh you may not recognize the name but you know who this is this is uh flameon okay this was yep. his dude yep. uh everybody I, I most people don't know his his normal his, his human name um but i got to hang out with him some at uh adepticon really nice dude uh obviously an extremely talented painter and i just i thought his warm spec guy here was super duper cool so um, these are three that just grabbed my attention that I want to share with people. But, you know, go check out the the article. It's great. Check out people doing awesome work. Even if they didn't win a Golden Demon, it doesn't mean that their art wasn't incredible. So, no, Agreed. Agreed. I, um, it just reminds me of how much I'm definitely not going to enter a painting competition anytime. <laughs> sure. Uh, Brawny Mate says, wasn't the lack of publicity for commended entries one of the things you didn't like about Golden Demon in the past, Vince? Yes, it was. And with last year's UK when they started doing this, and I fully, 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 fully support this. A thousand percent I support this. Um, it seems like they rewarded people taking risks this year um, in a way that we haven't seen necessarily previously. Um, I and I that. think that was that was previously one of your critiques as well. Yep. Yep. It, it was. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, we'll see what happens with next year. Do I decide to put something yeah. in or not? I guess time Well, not all not only that like it you know it may be time for you to do a response video to yourself uh, sure sure absolutely um elliot said what's your opinion on the lighting at golden demon for the pictures if you mind commenting on that there's been some drama over that yeah sure i'm happy to talk about it um obviously the lighting in the cases is utter garbo i mean that's not i don't think i'm saying anything controversial there everybody knows that <laughs> um there's not a human being who looked at the figs in those cases and thought that the figs looked good being blasted by like 2000 lumen LED lights two inches from the model. Turns out it uh, doesn't make for good good viewing of the figures in the case. So that's unfortunate. Now, as to the photo taking, um, it has to do with the individual models. I think they they tend to set the lighting and they don't adjust it much. Like to take really good photos of models, you have to like spend a lot of time adjusting the light on each model because first of all, they always use a white background, which is going to work better for some figs and not for others. It's just the nature of the thing. And then secondly, they always like they use very standardized settings. It feels like, and so as the fig shift in color tone and 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 sort of style and amount of shadow, it really they'll look very very different to sort of how they would look in the hand. Um, so, I mean, I think they just don't spend the time to take proper photos is my answer is what it comes down to. Um, they wash out a lot of stuff. Like things do just get overly blasted and, and they, some pictures just need different, different settings. Different, but that's when you take a lot of pictures, of different models, you will recognize that they, you can't just use a single set of settings. That's it's, it's yeah. non-controversial. So there you go. Okay. There you go. I commented on it uh okay good job man yeah absolutely uh all right and i agree commended very much feels like fourth demon these days it's really hard to get up to commended so everybody here deserves a big shout out okay uh dougie fresh do i think the judges knew about the ai background um no i i don't imagine they would i don't know how they could but they should have known it was a printed background um regardless of the usage of ai the printed background should be yep. you know not used so that's um, 
I mean, you when you have a judging staff that's not <laughs> trained judges, I guess. It's, it's what you get. Um, so there you are. Uh, okay, cool. What else we got? Um, we had an FAQ this week drop. The old one. We did. Um, we did. And it's long. Like, and, and not only is it long, they decided to hit those armies they said they were never touching again. Oh, yeah, like, sure. you, Do you think, like, this is a freebie pass? They're like, ah, oh, we'll give it one shot. We'll give you all one update. Or do you think they'll actually be intentional about cultivating um, those those secondary armies? Um, yeah, I think they'll, I mean, I think they deserve to give them an FAQ, right? Like, I think that that's just, that's just them being responsible. I liked the FAQ. Um, they're a little snarky at some places and that can rub some people the wrong way. I saw some responses like that on Twitter and I get it. Um, especially to some of the questions. I mean, I, as someone who's answered a lot of FAQs in my day, I get it after a while, you get a little punch drunk when you read the same question like 200 times, but then that's also a statement on how you wrote the rule. Right. Right. If there's that many questions coming in on it. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a big, very complicated game. So it doesn't surprise me. They made some really good changes that I thought, like, for example, um, closed model units get the plus one to combat res only if they have a unit strength of five or more. That was a good change. I actually like that quite a bit. Um, a lot of closed order units were just getting like a free plus one for no reason. And they're like single models and stuff. Um, so, you know, like there was, there was some, some good changes in there that I thought were, were actually like, they changed um, who can take sort of the the easy helm that was letting you stack too high on your save to only infantry and cabs. So you can't put it on like giant monsters and get them down to a two up, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, on the on the on the most part, I thought it was all good changes, good answers. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me that I was like, oh, that's going to ruin my enjoyment of the game. I thought it was just good clarifications. So it's the challenge with any game that has like literally two hundred pages of rules, right? Is is you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna need significant FAQs if it's a competitive game, right? So there you go. Um yeah, I mean like it it's it's uh Faces and Bases said this FAQ sounded like they took a few clarifications personally and agreed you got a snark instead of a better written rule. Yeah, I mean like that's that's the problem. Like I don't mind a little bit of comedy, but you don't want to actually be snarky and mean people have legitimate questions. You should you should answer them. So there you go. There you go. Uh, I want, we're going to do another old world show soon. I, I do want to do another one. It's just, they keep putting up these AOS four articles that are like Man, very much I'm just, need to be talking about. I'm just ducking and weaving here. Like with all these fourth edition announcements, like mm -hmm. they're going to be releasing articles, multiple articles every week. I don't know how we get out of this until July. Uh, this is pretty much the, we're in a doom loop. Yeah. Now we uh, are like, because we're going to start covering, covering armies here in the next yep, couple weeks. Yep. So, so we'll, we'll see. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Um, but we'll get an old world show in there somewhere. I'm not worried. Um, I want to go back to it. I've been playing some more games with it, so it's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, cool. I think that's... Is that all our news, Tom? Uh, yeah, I think so for this week. Like, other right. than the articles, which we'll cover, obviously, in the main, se main segment. Yes, indeed. Don't worry. In the main segment, we're going to be talking about all those other things. Okay, cool. Well, Tom, let's go to some pick of the week, then. What do you got, Everett? What do you got there, brother? What do you want to share with people? So, I had an original, and then I have another one that I realized that I want to spruik. And so, I'm still going to cool. steal the original, which you're going to be angry about, which is fine. Um, Heywo did a wonderful, level-headed, but authentic critique of the topic that we're going to talk about. And so, yep. if you all haven't seen... Uh, if you all haven't seen Hey Woe's uh, treatment of the model culling, I think he hits all the high points that need to be hit, you know, and I think that are in a, in a, just a deeply authentic and truth telling way without a lot of salt or without a lot of rage. And so I really appreciated um, Hey Woe's engagement. Um, my bonus this week or my plus one this week is actually John Ninas's video on Golden Demon. Um, and on the final steps he kind of did that to get him over the edge and as he was reflecting on the event from Adepticon. I really appreciated that just because um, I think it, these are conversations that you and I have had before where I'm mm -hmm. like, what is this missing, right? Like there's something that, that, that there's, the, there's one additional thing here that it needs to push it a little bit higher, right? And yep. you're like, go do this, this, and this. Yep. And I think that we, like John modeled that process in conversation well um and i don't think that we do that enough in army painting 
of like, what is the, what do I need to change here to, to go that next step without going to an event and then going to a paint judge and be like, why didn't I win? And then they point yeah, those sure. things out. Yeah. Like just, but the peer feedback is appreciated. And I loved how John modeled that in his video. Yeah. You, like the funny part about it is I think oftentimes when you're a, a junior, you know, when you're sort of just starting out in the, in the art, you're afraid to get critical feedback and stuff like that, right? It's just, it's harder to take it because you're sort of, you don't really know what you're doing. And so you don't really know what you're doing wrong. Everybody who I know who's like an artist who's performing at whatever we want to call it, like a high level, I don't know, whatever you call that, right? Mm -hmm. They love when other, they love having other, other, you know, uh, artists as it were look at their stuff and and give them and just like be like this 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 right and it's because it just becomes something you're you're a nerd to and something you realize that like you're missing things because you are too close too into it right and you need that feedback from other people so yeah it's it's uh it's a great way john like absolutely i agree with you models that very well uh for my pick of the week look it's fine you took that hey Woe video it's going to be a hey Woe with on I'm also going to shout out a Heywo video. And that video is called The Year is 1993. Okay? <laughs> he put it up today. It's one of my favorite videos he's ever made. Uh, there's no way it's monetized because he's using just straight commercial music in it. And it's uh, incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, I, I like Heywo makes good videos, period. The year yep. is 1993. It will be linked below. Uh, and just just watch it. It's like 11 minutes. Just watch it. It's worth mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be for those of a certain age, say like Tom, you and I's age, although even though you're younger <laughs> than me by a, by a some small amount, it will very much be like a, oh yeah, that was my life. That's been my life. So... Uh, like I have to imagine it's what boomers felt when they when they first heard uh we didn't start the fire or whatever, you know, like that was mm -hmm. their their mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. Okay. At any rate, uh so check it out. Um All right. With that, Tom, let's go over to some hobby time. What have you been working on? Uh, as I said, I, I've been building the end of my spearhead content, like just filling out my case. And so I think I have, um, five, 11, I have, uh, about 17 armies in the case of various okay. spearhead and Vanguard stuff. Um, and so once I get done with my current project and the commission that I'm working on, it'll be what I'm working through for painting. And so the goal be the goal being that like painting through all of the spearhead for all of the armies um, to have like playable painted like tight yeah, yeah. units. Again, hoping that spearhead's good. Um, if it's not like that, this project could get abandoned real quick. But um, because I have a bunch of young players, it's just the exact on ramp that I need for that. Perfect. Perfect. Uh... Oh, and then. And then as well, finishing the painting for the event this week that Vince has bailed on Tyler and I and Anthony and will not be joining us for. Thanks, Vince. No, I'm happy to have done it. Uh, believe me, I'm, I'm so happy I'm not having to go to that event this weekend. Um, like, it's, it's nothing against the event. I'm sure it's going to be an awesome event. It's just I'm very happy to not be traveling this weekend. Um, okay. Uh, for my hobby time, we're going to switch photos. We're going to go over here because I finished this bad boy up. Uh, so this is the, this is a big, I don't know what he is. He's a knight. He's a renegade knight. Um, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a guy. He's a 40. He's a ner nergly knight. He's a nergly knight. That's right. Yes, exactly. Um, so I've got a few photos of him here. I've still got to like crop some of these and stuff like that, but they're, they're good enough for now. Um, these are just a lot of the raw photos. Uh, but I finished this guy all up. Um, very pleased with how he came out. We got a little tighter shots here. There you go. So you can see some of the, some of that rusty, crusty goodness in, in there. Uh, but this guy was a lot of fun. Um, it's fun to work on like super Nurgle-fied models. This was just like a ton of, of work 
This guy was probably like, I don't know, 250 hours plus all in, more than that. I, I can't even say. Um, he just took a long time. Um, but I'm really happy with him. What does it say? Somebody said he's, ah, oh, he's a night castigator. There you go. Sure, that guy. Sounds, <laughs> yes, I knew that, of course. Um, uh, castigators, aren't those, didn't those just get discontinued? I think you were talking about a different guy. Um, but this dude has a big gun and a sword. And I like, I like big robots with swords because it's the dumbest thing you could possibly put on something like this. And it's awesome. Uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. So yeah. how many nights have you done Vince at this point? I mean, I've done lots of nights, but, but you know, this is about the, it's about the ones that are done to sort of this level. Um, I've probably done, I don't know, eight nights or so to this level. I only tend to do one of this level per year because 250, 300 hours, whatever these things take is like, yeah, yeah, I, I just don't have it in me, man. That's, that's a lot. You only have like 2000 working hours in a year. So this is like 10, 15% of my hobby for the year. Right. Uh, on, on this one piece. It's just, I can't do more than that. Um, yeah. but yeah, he came out real fun. Uh, so I'm happy with all the weathering and streaking and everything like that. I made, He'll 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 have many videos coming up, uh, and so you know there you go. So that was my it, big project. I finished. Does it hurt your soul that you've poured that much time into a piece that you could never actually like enter into a golden demon or or, or like competitive? Because like, it's not the right colors, right? Like that, like it doesn't match any of the houses. Yeah, correct. It doesn't matter how good it is. It would get rejected out of hand at Golden Demon, yeah, because I'm I'm using like non-standard iconography and I have free hand and and it's not it's like Nurgle. It's not matched to any of the houses. It's not House Veratrix or whatever, whatever the Nurgle houses are. Like, no, does I mean, it hurt your soul to like put that much time in a project like that? Okay, not at all. I want to paint the thing how I want to paint the thing. Painting it for Golden Demon, where I have to like um, constrain what I want to do to better suit their their whims and their stupid desires that hurts my soul painting something that is fun and that makes me happy does not hurt my soul it frees my soul and if it, it like i'll take this thing to plenty of competitions he'll he'll he'll, okay. he'll see competition i'm not worried okay. um the other thing i'm working on and then so i finished that guy up i did my office cleaning like i said um so this guy was a lot of fun and uh the base was also really fun to do to do that like I, i'm really happy with a toxic waste goo river that i came up with um that was kind of like a layered experience so i thought that was cool um but i wanted to work on something fun so i have this like beast model this is going to be like way overly bright because of the light up here nice um, but i have this like he's kind of like a tauren a little bit from um uh wow i guess i don't know something like that um but he's a cool model and he was given to me by a friend who's a, a sculptor and so it's not like a commercially available thing and this is one of his sculpts he's been working on, and he gave it to me to paint. And he was like, I don't know if you'll ever paint it, but you can take it. And I was like, I love this guy. Love his muscles and everything. So um, there'll be a video for him, too, uh, all about painting, like, his fur and stuff like that of how to do sort of fur texture. But uh, this guy's just been fun, and I've been looking at, like, uh, Native American garb for, like, how to do the rest of his, because that's clearly what his clothing is modeled after, for, like, what's mm -hmm. the color palettes and stuff like that. So, um yeah, so that's you just a that's a fun relaxation project. I'll still get a nice, you know, video maybe two out of it, but um, but it's you know, it's for me to for me to enjoy and just relax. Uh, and in painting that, I'm also getting to test out these new um, like atom paints, these things, sure. uh, which I picked up at at uh, Adepticon from Big Child. They were made in association with Ruben Martinez. So this is me giving them a, a good run before I do a full review. So yeah, so it's been a very busy hobby week. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm telling you. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, well, there's Kevin said he can go to Crystal Brush or something. Well, there's no more Crystal Brush, um, but he can go to like MHE and Capital Palette and stuff like that, certainly. So, and he will. Okay. Uh, Charles Hollum says next up the Ar Acheron. Is that the other version of this guy, this big guy? I have another one of them. I don't know what they're called, but yes, I do have the other version of this guy as well. Um, at some point, I'll do another one of him. Um, I don't have a corn um, night yet, so I'll probably do a corn night at some point, which would be fun. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, with that, Tom, are you ready to get into the main segment? Uh, some might say I was born for it. 
I was born ready. He will know his ways as though he was born to them. Okay, cool. Well, let's do that then. All right. Now, there's three different articles we're going to talk about today. But we're going to start with the spicy one, Tom. We're going to start right away. Now, before we get into this, everybody hit like, subscribe, do all those fun things. If you enjoy fun Nurgle painted nights and other things like that and go in your own way with your hobby and anything else, why don't you hit like? It really helps out and helps other people find the show. Okay. Now, Tom, I want you yep. to start. Before I get into it, because I've got a, got a bit of a rant, uh, I want you to go. I'm going to let you go for a minute. So, what do you think of this? Give me the models leaving the range. What did you think of this on the whole? Like, give me your 40,000 foot view. Give me your, give me your feelings. Yeah, so... Have you ever been right and hated the fact that you were right? All the time, Tom. That's my life. So... The whole internet exploded last week. Right, like the Twitter Warhammer Twitterverse, right, and it even like began to bleed its way into like mainstream gaming content, sure, like magazines and stuff like that about about the kind of explosive discontinuation of a number of lines. And on one hand, it made me laugh because I know in a number of chats I was sharing that like I felt firmly that Beast of Chaos were going to get discontinued. I felt, and I was arguing from like a product management, like a product line standpoint of like just managing inventory and product lines and differentiations and stuff like that, that that was going to go. I was arguing that there were pieces of that beast, uh, beast of chaos would go. And I said, I even said at the time, I wouldn't be surprised if we had the dwarves and uh, dark elves from cities go. Mm -hmm. Then it'd be replaced with some degree of like allies that we saw how cities did previously, right. Of some type of like contingent units coming in from like, fire slayers and ko and all that stuff mm -hmm. to replace that um that didn't happen but those other lines did get discontinued um as well with that we knew i knew that some stormcast stuff was going to get retired just from the standpoint of line refreshes sure. um to me the real shock was um was the sacrosanct chamber it yeah. was the entire the entire canning of arguably some of the best sculpts they've ever done. Sure. Um, yes, they were fat cast, but they were also, um, they were also, there's some more just legitimately good sculpts. Um, the kitty caters were the first sculpts that I ever looked at and were like, I love that. I'm not playing Stormcast, but I bought and built them because I love them. Sure. Austra Austra Australia, Soul, whatever. Um, the mounted named hero riding a kitty um I, I like i loved her and i did a wonderful conversion like head swap and stuff like that on her and i i just they're wonderful models um and so that was a bit surprising and yet it wasn't um we know that stormcast was overwhelmingly bloated um and that this really is gw's mo it's been this way forever and i know that people would say oh yeah but that was you know like this is different this is different than the move from warhammer fantasy battles into uh, to aos first edition and it's not because when you move to a compendium rewrite ground up rewrite it is like moving to another game mm -hmm. right like it is truly a like it is truly a revisiting rewriting reconceptualizing what the game is and if, if major callings are going to happen, this is when it's going to happen. It's going to happen at these major compendium, re, you know, re, ground up rewrites. Yeah. Um, because this is like, it, it removes extra work if you're cutting, you know, like you don't need to design things for for stuff that is needs to go the way of the dodo. Um, and so in that sense, none of it surprised me, but all of it broke my heart. Okay. Um, watching the pain get rehashed as people had these armies that they've fallen in love with. And as you have said, you know, they identified with, yep. right. And, and it was all an emotional reaction that they were, um, you know, and, and for me, it, like it re it re-energized and reminded me of the fresh wounds of, of what happened with tomb Kings and then what happened with high elves and 
dwarves and all the things that they've done before. And so um, for those that did lose armies, I'm sorry, because it sucks. Um, this is this is the exact thing that I warned about that I said that, you know, like one of my major rants back then that got me blacklisted from GW was that like this type of approach to a model line sets a precedent for how they're going to move forward when it happens again. Yeah. And so I was trying to raise a big enough stink so that there would be pushback from the community in order for them to look at amending policies and mm -hmm. not approaching it in this way. That was not effective and they've done it again. Um, and now it's, it's hit, Stormcast players, arguably some of those that used to cry only the faithful, and now they have been cold as well. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm sorry. Sure. Just to clarify, by the way, because I, I do want to hit a couple comments. Yeah. Uh, sure. That came up while you were talking, Kyle. Yeah, we're live. Hi, Kyle. I can I can see you. Nice to see you. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 assistant ref. I don't think this GW's MO this move towards a new approach where model lines are just computed on, discontinued on a compressed timeline. Keep in mind when the Tomb King stuff was retired, there were models in that range that were only four years old when they were retired. So that was a whole army going, but there were models that were released, specifically the Tomb Guard, the Necropolis Knights, and the Necro Sphinx War Sphinx, uh, as well as that Tomb King were all released in May 2011. They were, um, squatted or whatever you want to call it, retired. Uh, legended uh, in, you know, whatever we'll call it, twenty end of 2015, 2016, so four or five years old, something like that, depending on how much you want to you wanna give there for when they actually died, died. So there certainly is some precedent for, for models going quickly. Um, okay. So that's just quick, quick comment responses. Yeah. Okay. My thoughts. Let's go. This is legendarily dumb how they decided to execute on this. I am shocked to my core that a company with professional marketing staff put this content out in the format they did. The nature of models needing to get, in, get cut from the range at the change is absolutely true. There were things that need to be retired. That is a fact. That is reality. They produce too much stuff. They cannot produce these kits forever. It's a physical thing. They carry a cost. I understand all of that. That is a harsh reality of playing a miniatures game is that you know those miniatures will not be pr produced forever. And so we knew there were going to be things that were going to need to be retired. The nature, though, of how they chose to execute on that was so wrongheaded and backwards, it shocks me to no end. Because it it shows that whoever made the decision, wrote this, put this all together. And by the way, I don't want to blame the person who wrote the copy on this. I'm not. Sure. The person sure. who wrote the copy on this likely is somebody way down the line who was responding to their boss's 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 request. So I want to be super yep. clear about my anger. My anger is directed at the marketing department as a whole and the decisions that were made in the upper management of the organization people who do have the power to affect change okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i mean you hades you can say that if it's true there are plenty of old things but those still sell they have to retire models like models will be retired it can be a little it can be a lot you can not like it you can like it it's simply true it's, you can set your timeline wherever you want it can be 20 years 30 years 10 years five years it's some kind of time horizon okay like, it will happen. The world will eventually just become dust. All right? It's like, it's, but, but that's not the point. The point isn't, do they have to be retired? They do. The point is, is that this is the complete wrong way to do it. And I'm going to break this, Tom, into four different categories of wrongness. Because this is screwed up in four different states. But before I get into the four categories, I want to talk about why this matters so much and why everybody reacted. Okay? Because this isn't just, we're not making a model anymore. That's number one. And this isn't, our game isn't going to have rules that support this anymore. This is, what this is doing is saying, some part of your identity is dying. That's what this is. People, you mentioned it, 
because I talked about it before, but people identify with armies that they play. When we collect this stuff and paint it and pour our souls into it, we are doing more than what you do with a magic card. Like a ban announcement happens in magic, you make a new deck. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem with this is this is a much deeper emotional relationship. And when you cut something, you are really literally cutting away a part of someone. Okay? Well, metaphorically. Not literally. Metaphorically. And people will respond emotionally to that. It doesn't matter if you can proxy. It doesn't matter anything, anything. If there are solutions. The pain is still there. It's raw. You've hit a nerve. Because you've hit someone's identity. And people's identities are obviously pretty important to them. Okay. And I want to have that be the grounding for what I'm about to say in these four categories. So let's go through it. Okay. Number one, like is it, there, there's there's category the first. Things that got cut that have replacements coming and they were unclear about and did not show the replacements and caused nothing but dumb confusion on the internet amongst low information people who you will easily bleed from the hobby through your bad writing. So this is yeah. Skaven, basically all, and Stormcast, some. Okay, so things like Liberators. The number yeah. of comments, I was following all of this, and the number of comments I saw that were people not understanding that some of these things were being re replaced replaced, was immense. Like, like the sculpts were being updated. That's what Correct. was happening. Which we've had done in a variety of different ways, and we've known, like, zombies are a great example of that. Um, they could have very clearly, they should have ended the article with these models are going to be retired. No, nope. here's incorrect. They should have done this. They should have won perfect world. They should have shown the new sculpts, old model, exactly. new model, old okay. model, new model, old model, new model, period. I don't give a crap if it cuts your future clicks. You got plenty of things to make people come to your website and click. You are actively hurting your payer player base because you're trying to farm clicks. Whoever the ma the website manager is period. Full stop. If that's untenable, if you really can't stomach that, then what you should have had is a different frame. I'm going to go down here. Okay? Sure. Let's go down to the Stormcast. You should have had a different frame. Liberators should have been in a green frame or something. I don't give a crap. Or have a box yep. around it. Or have a big giant star. Or whatever. Saying that new sculpts were coming. Correct. Correct. And right before yeah. we started naming any models, it should have said all models you see that have mm -hmm. the green frame or the giant star or the smiley face or the don't worry, it's going to be okay book from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't care. Yeah. Should have had that so that people glancing and reading the article who are low information players would know, oh, okay, you're getting a new one. And by the way, in that text... They should have said, not only is this getting replaced, but if you like your Liberators, if you like your whatever that's getting replaced, it doesn't matter. You will be able to use your old sculpts indefinitely. They are just as valid at every tournament, every setting. We recognize you. There is no need to rebuy or repaint these models. This Dude. is just change management language. It's just change management language. Yep. That's number one. That's category one. I have never seen a harder self-own in a piece of marketing. This is an unforced error. They pissed a bunch of people off when they didn't need to at all. Okay. One. That's group one. Okay. Now let's talk group two. Group two is a specialized category. Okay. Mm -hmm. Group two is Stormcast models that are being retired from the line theoretically without replacement. Okay. Okay. Which, who knows exactly what that is from this list. Uh, because of the problem, sure. see, see original statement about Group 1. But yep. assumingly all of Sacrosanct yep. getting retired, it's not going to get immediately replaced. They said the chamber's going away, right? So assumingly they're not recasting them. Okay. At least not at this point. Maybe, maybe in some future iteration if they have a, a role in the line. Of course. Future could be anything. Could be a pony, right? Whatever. Yep. Okay. The proper way to do this, like, yes, of course, 
Okay, like most of these have pretty one-to-one -one replacements in the line. Like, yes, you could use your evocators on Dracolines as Dracoths. Yes, you could use your uh, your sequiturs as liberators. It's a dude with a shield and a hammer or a lady with a shield and a hammer, right? They just happen to have robes on. So, like, obviously you can proxy them, of course. But that's not yeah. really helpful, okay? Right. But you could. Like, you can. It's fully within your power, and I hope everybody who has their Stormcast realizes that they can, and they do. Okay? But that... But, like... The proper way to fix that would have been to actually make it real. To say, look, we had too many people doing the same role. We, we're going to see the Liberator scroll in an article coming up here when we talk about the War Scrolls, right? And they have pictures of multiple Liberators at the bottom. You want to know what should have been down at the bottom of that? Old Liberator, uh, Sequitur, new Liberator. These are Liberators. Liberator's armor takes many forms, right? Depending on well, who, when exactly their armor was cast when exactly they were reforged last, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All three of these models are liberators for our purposes. Is it perfect? No, because people who played Sacrosanct likely want their specialized rules. But it at least gives the actual authority to the player to say, we see you. Your models are still valid. They have a place in our game. They're right here. Look, here's the picture on the scroll. We've integrated them in and we ex and we expect and, and hope and encourage you and license you to keep using them going forward. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That was all it took. Put a different picture. Put Sequitur Lady on the Liberator Scroll. How hard is that? Nobody cares. Right? It would be the easiest thing in the world. But yes, of course, now they have to do proxies and then people will feel like, I don't want to do a proxy. I want to do the real thing. Blah, 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 blah. You make people uncomfortable. No reason. Yep. That's number two. That's category two. Okay. So that's like if these if this sacrosanct had to go, which fine, I guess. Like, I don't know why it had to go. Like what should have been retired is twenty hero scrolls. And and maybe a few and the and, like and maybe and a the few Drac units. And the Dracolith stupid like the worst sculpts in the Stormcast line. And by the way, when you retired 20 hero scrolls, yet again, it should be the same thing. Like, all of these uh, all of these heroes are this hero, right? Everybody who's vaguely standing around with, like, a magic stick is your caster guy now. <laughs> okay? Like, right? Yeah. Okay. But, like, so, you know, number one, I wouldn't have cut th this entire chamber to begin with. But if it had to be cut, which, like, I don't, whatever, fine. Right? If it did, then at minimum, do the work to show that you care about the community. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. category two. Category three, we're not done yet, is BOC and Bone Splitters. So I want to scroll down here. Because, like, all these Skaven are getting replaced, whatever, whatever. Let's yeah. talk BOC and Bone Splitters. We've all known the Bone Splitter retirement was coming for a while. <laughs> sure. Okay? Like, I mean, we've been talking about it for the we've, better part of a year. We've literally been talking about it on this show for nine months. It's obvious you didn't care about this army forever. Okay. Fine. It had to go. Okay. I think retiring BOC is, was was a was legitimately a mistake. If, if Bone Slayers had to go, Bone Slayers had to go. Like, basically, I mean, I don't want to be insulting to the few Bone Slayers players out there, but legitimately no one played the army right it was like a, it was an almost unplayed army for writ writ large and i'm sure the sales numbers reflected that it had to be cut that's one of the hard calls you got to make as a product line manager you will eventually come to a point where you've got to make hard calls and if something just isn't selling you do have to retire products as someone who's had to do that in their life multiple times it sucks and it's painful because some some small number of clients are using it but it's what you do BOC, we're losing because, as near as I can tell, they happen to exist in the old world. Yeah. That's it. So we're losing an army to some interscene political chicanery going on in the halls of GW between Normal Studio and Specialist Design Studio. Unforgivable. Yeah. Just unreal. Unreal levels of stupidity. 
who cares? Because you've just, like you've said in the article, they're going to the old world. They'll still be available. You've said this. They're a mainline army in the old world. Okay. And I understand, I, I understand what, you know, Rob obviously did a video on this and the, yep. you know, the, the financial lines in between that stuff. Yep. That's all stupid. That's all stupid. There's no other words for it. It's indefensible business practices. Join the modern age. Having overlapping work like that is, is absolutely nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Okay. I work for a company, a very large company, that has lots of small business units. I'm one of them. My particular group that I work for has about 600 people, Tom. My company, my, my small company within this very large company. Okay. Now, my very large company that we roll up to is 30, 40,000 people around the world. It's massive. Okay. And across our organization, there's lots of like for each individual product, for each of these businesses. Yeah, we have lots of repeated things, but we don't compete against each other. Okay. Where like we work synergistically with other business units in our division and where it makes sense to have shared services. We do so. It rolls up to the parent organization. This is just like common sense in modern business. Okay. So to lose an army because of this civil war or whatever it is, is just dumb. It's just dumb. It's true. You made yeah, a new army. Of... You made a new model for this. The Beast Lord came out recently. You made a herd stone. Like you've done work. You have, they have enough spells. Some of these models were refreshed. It's this truly a kept. kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face situation. Like that's truly what this is. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact is, is that we be, we got Theradons, we got Zangor, we've got Salongor, right? Like <clears throat> we have an entire precedent of models that have been created that could easily have a home and could have been a renewed Beast of Chaos line. No one can tell me that Kragnos isn't an old centerpiece Beast of Chaos model. Kragnos? He's not. You don't He's absolutely so? not. I can tell you. I can tell you with 100% certainty he is exactly what he was designed for. He was not intended for Beast of Chaos. Ever. And why do you why do you say that? Because I know it for a fact. I'm not I'm not going to say any more than that, but I know it for sure. an absolute complete certain 100% fact. Okay. That's just the reality of the thing. I'm sorry to I'm sorry to break the news. I lo I know this Kragnos rumor is real popular, but it's not. He was always designed to be exactly what he is. He was never a Beast of Chaos thing. Well, okay. then he really doesn't fit in that faction, and that's fine. Like the aesthetics, like it blends into the beast of uh, beast of chaos line, aesthetically. I, I I have no comment on that. I can only comment on uh, the thing. Sure, sure. Okay. Regardless, um, there are uh, Theradons. Then, if you don't want to go with that, like Theradons are min new Minotaur sculpts. Congratulations, Ogroid Thaumaturge. Like the the sculpts are out there, right? that could have easily lived in a renewed Beast of Chaos line, and they chose not to. Um, I have some theories, and we can go into theory time at some point when you get done, as to what happened with the Stormcast. But that's fine. you're you're only on point three. I am. So my point is, this is, again, just dumb. Just dumb, dumb, dumb. Category three is, is, is mainly about Beast of Chaos, which just shouldn't have been cut. Sell them in both games. Who cares a bit? Put squares and circles in there, okay? Like, fine and dandy. Um, I, and I don't care about their interesting politics. I don't care about their departmental accounting. That's all stupid. It's a bad way to run a business. End. Okay. Okay. Category four is things that were cut and were completely unclear on what we're doing and just caused a lot of consternation. Okay. So here, what I mean is specifically these guys I brought up on screen, all of the war cry war bands, right? Yep. So what they specifically say, the definitive mortal followers, this means number of warbands representing the wider worshippers of chaos and the more realms will be retiring from the spotlight and the range. This mostly involves warbands from the previous edition of Warcry as well as Kogra's Ravagers from Under Warhammer Underworlds, but they'll all get Legends War Scrolls. Okay, are you retiring them fully? Are they never available ever again? Are they? Are you doing something with Warcry? Are these things just retired from Warcry? Are they not going to get rules in that game in the future? The amount of information lacking here 
is the 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 silence is deafening. Okay. Yep. Why would you print this like this? You have to know this is going to raise a thousand questions and just piss people off. Because now people are afraid that uh that suddenly war cry is going to go away. Okay. Right. Right. And so, like, you know, look, do I feel bad for our our mutual friend who went out and did, like, the <laughs> 70 Splintered Fang thing? No. Uh, I, I painted four of the, 40 of those to be... I understand. That was, one of, that was my first commission. Mm-hmm. So, like, <laughs> I, like, I get it. Do um, I feel bad for him? No. Because I've had to play against that <laughs> army multiple times. <laughs> There's no... I don't feel bad at all. Okay? You're... You don't... You don't lament when those who have tortured you suffer righteous retribution but that being said the amount of like like just seriously explain what you're doing because this is serious stuff this is a lot of units you cut from this army which fine maybe it was too many they're all duplicative there's not enough room to create unique roles like say that stuff and say but don't worry we're not gonna these these they'll still be valid in war cry war cry is sticking around like it's still gonna be a great great fun game or whatever you know what the best part about it though was is that because, like, with it, the exception here is that they couldn't have said, use these as your Dark Oath models, right? Like, uh, yeah. your Dark Oath factions, because they were all on wrong base sizes. Like, mm-hmm. if you'll remember, most of them were on on 28s, and then on top of them being on 28s, like, they were mismatched in the units, and, like, most of this just doesn't have a home. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. And there's not anywhere for it to go clearly. Um, yeah, and and related to that, like, yes, you're highlighting these Warcry Warbands, but it raised a bunch of questions about Underworld Warbands as well, because from sure. the article, what it looks like is that all Underworld Warbands are gone, seemingly, or legended. That, I don't know. Hence Category 4 of, like, hey, you need to say more, right? <laughs> say more, okay? There's There's not enough. Okay. And so that's a problem all over the place. So that's category four of things that were screwed up with this with this article. Again, this is just like from top to bottom. I hope people now understand. Like, and that's the problem. Everybody was angry and screaming at each other for completely logical but different reasons. Because everybody fell into had like an issue with one of these four categories, because they fell into just these yeah. four distinct pitfalls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That could yep. have been corrected at every step of the way. I have talked about how they could have changed nothing, retired all of these models, right? And at least been more transparent about it. People yep. still would have been angry, of course, and justifiably so for all the reasons I said at the beginning. But at but least we wouldn't have be... to make it worse. They made it worse. Okay? Like... Not only did they dig their own grave, they then threw some poison and punji sticks at the bottom of it before climbing in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's true. It's 100% true. And it's like, it's so funny. In my post on Twitter, one of the things I, I, I had linked an old post that I posted back in like 2019 or 2017 or something. Where I, where I basically said like, they have to do better with communication and transparency. Like that was my big critique. And on one hand, I I want to thank them for the degree of transparency that they offered us. Yeah, I haven't got there yet, but I was going to get to it. But yes. The the problem is, is that they didn't go far enough. Mm -hmm. They did. They weren't transparent in the ways they needed to be transparent. Yeah. Now, there's a secret fifth category here, Tom, but I'm not talking about it because it didn't cause any controversy. Okay. And it's like, it's this. (laughs) It's this stuff. It's the like others. Other than yeah. Valkia, which the, just should like the fine cast, the fine get cast a model. new sculpt, right? Like, and yeah. other than the humor that Skilla and F- F- and Fingrim was playable in like every game that Warhammer made, like everyone, all of them, because like it's yeah. a Warcry model. I guess not in a world technically, but it's like a Warcry model and a AOS model and a 40k model and a Blood Bowl model and just like old world <laughs> model. It's like it was usable in every game system, which is just funny. Um, you know, these things are all like okay. Sure. Sure. It's 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 funny to me that big boss is like one quarter to one third of his actual 
um, like that entire product line. And so yeah. the fact that all those, the other spy, the plastic spider kit stayed and he didn't like, I was like, come on guys. Like yeah. if you're going to just pull the bandaid off, just get rid of all of them. It's okay. I accept that spiders are not going to be part of the goblin aesthetic anymore. Like I, I'm okay with that, but they didn't. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying this is nothing. I'm sure there's people who are like, oh, that's a shame. But like, whatever these, these, this seven things is just like, it's, it's seven things that's going away. Individual models. Right. Like you'll, you'll 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 live is 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 my point here like in the end this is like a falling and scraping your knee compared to falling and breaking your leg right i'm gonna miss that miss weaver though great sculpt. sure sure yeah so uh, you know all in all i want to do i want to end this on a note of 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 the the following thing and we, we can we can i don't know we don't have to finish i'm just ending my particular rant here yeah yeah and that's to say the bright spot here was the time that they gave to communicate this. And this is important. All of these things will be valid for a full first year of 4.0. And I appreciate them giving 15, 15-ish 15 months, basically, of, of warning yeah. to these things being retired. That is a really notable change, okay? Yeah. And one I actually do greatly appreciate so that people who have these armies, especially, you know, people who have BOC and, and, and bone splitters or who had, you know, Stormcast and don't want to proxy them out or, or whatever, do have the time to like one, still play their armies in more games if they want to, and to actually collect a new army if they decide to stick with the, the hobby and with, with GW, right? Right. right? Right. Which is which that's a some percentage of people won't, of course. Right, like they just remove some percentage, even if it's single digit, of their community by yeah, this sure. type of announcement. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I do appreciate, like it is worth mentioning that that was the one correct choice in this entire move was the amount of time. Previously, when this has been announced, we got basically no warning. It'd be like, they'd be doing it now and saying like in... July this is on last chance to buy. Yeah, like this yeah, is on last chance to buy. Buy your kits now, and you have a couple more months before it's gone forever. Yep. Right. Yeah. So it it gives them a year to still play the army, to still have fun at tournaments if they want, to still be around, and and to be part of the legal rule set and everything like that. So they they're in for for that full year, which is nice. It is a it is the retirement tour. It is the this is your last chance to catch ELO before they're gone forever. Right. It's sad. Um. But it's something, right? And so it was a good move. Like, that was one... Like, I'm not... There's a lot of negative here. But having the Stormcast, the BOC, and the Bone Splitters have one year of Legend support is the correct answer. I, obviously, the little guys, I think they're just cutting them. But the but the, the, the armies, the things that are armies, actually having a year where you can play them is good. Uh, two factions, Beast Cast, Monsters, whereas a number of Stormcast Eternals, Miss Sacrosanct, and Warrior Chambers are getting free to download digital battle tones. Yes. So they'll play until summer of 2025. Yep. So, okay. Good. Unless, unless events want to make them available longer. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, but the point is, is that, like, that was one correct choice amidst a C of bad choices, but at least there is a little buoy floating out amongst the stormy sea okay of like whoever was the person that made that decision that, that is was was very correct and 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 thankful and, and i'm thankful for them to do so uh but all in all the problem here that this really creates is because of the poor way this was communicated because of all the consternation it caused what it did importantly was shatter something that is very hard to regain Luxury companies like this who make toys, right, that we all invest our heart and souls into, rely on trust, that we have a relationship with the company. It's a deeper relationship than you do with most companies, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. You don't have this relationship with McDonald's. You might like McDonald's a lot, okay? Like, that's, you might really dig McDonald's. You might go there quite frequently. But if they change something, you're going to be like, McDonald's is so stupid. And either you'll keep going there or you'll just go to a different restaurant. Okay? For the most part. This is something deeper. And trust is really hard to regain. And having people feel like their models now have a very limited 
time frame, whether that's true or not. Like, they could go another 20 years without making any major changes to the line, right? That could happen. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it could, right? Where, like, you could imagine that it's, like, 2040 is the next time we really see any kind of major cut, right? And they just keep sure. producing these again. Yeah? Sure. And all we all we get in between now and then is, like, the basically the other section of this where they retire a couple of other fine cast models or something like that. Okay. But that's possible. But why would anyone believe that's to be the case? Because you've shattered the trust because you weren't transparent here. Right. Um, the, the reality of like what you, by, by executing this in the fashion they did, they not only hit people's identity without realizing how serious it was, without putting in the proper work to make sure that they, they eased people through proper change management they shattered a lot of trust in the community, and that is a very hard thing to rebuy. So that's the end of my rant. There we go. That's all of my thoughts on this. After Can I can I take us into a week. a a fun tinfoil hat theory time? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna invite everybody to put on your tinfoil hats. This may not actually be reality, but I think that I put a lot of thought into what's going on um, and what has happened with the line. If you've been a watcher of the show for any amount of time, um, as we got our um, second, um, we got our Vanguard expansion and then we went into 2.0 um, and we began to get some duplicate models like duplicate Heraldors and stuff like that. One of the things that I began to become very allowed about in the development of the Stormcast line was that one thing that I thought that was happening was that they were in the process of preparing us to, um, to move in a development way. So the reason why I was suggesting that they were bloating the lines and they, and I think that this legitimately was the trajectory of the game or the trajectory of the product line as a, as a, as its own independent thing is that um, I think that the blow was intentional. The duplicate roles were intentional because my gut was that the trajectory that they were trying to reproduce was the Space Marine trajectory, sure. such that the product lines would have had duplicate sculpts for the individual chambers or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you would have had a book for either, either Storm Host or Chamber. So you'd have like a book for Warrior Chamber Stormcast, or you'd have a book for like, the hammers of Sigmar storm host or whatever, where there would be some amount of shared models between the lines and then sure. some amount of models that are isolated into specific lines, which is why we had like, you can't tell me that, that the Veritant, the, the Lord Veritant wasn't just an alternate knight or a Lord Castellan resculpt. Sure. I mean, like, look at these two, right? look at them, look at them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like they, like it is like, you are in the same space. Um, and they just renamed it, but I, I firmly believe that the trajectory of the storm hosts were or the Stormcast line was originally to go with an addition of bloat. And then once they have a, like a critical mass, and this would be good change management, right? Go with bloat until they hit a critical mass and then split it off into individual product lines, like shun, sure. some shared models, some, um, yes, as sporadic as just mentioned, they there was a time where they had the upgrade packs. Remember when they tried that? When they there's right. like, yeah, yeah, correct, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and we began to see this when individual heroes were being developed for the individual storm hosts. Yep. And so I think that I think that there was truly a trajectory towards this, a plan towards this in second edition. Um, and I have some like circumstantial evidence from conversations with some executives over games where some people made comments to them about that and they expressed a desire they dearly wish that they could do that and this is in like the 2019 2020 route and i think what happened is is that mid second edition they realized that their brand couldn't support splitting off a bunch of product lines like that mm -hmm. of, of stormcast like that the, that the market couldn't actually sustain that and so no, i think stormcast aren't space marines they're not as popular that's what it comes right. down to aos that's, players that's, don't like that that our AR AOS players aren't like almost that. So every person who plays 40k in any way has a space marine army. I have a space marine sure. army. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I barely play 40k. Right. Yep. yep. That is not and, true for Stormcast. Now I have like like you have two, two and a half Stormcast released. armies. Yeah. 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 Indeed. But <laughs> so your point stands. 
I, I honestly think that their trajectory was that they were going to be developing it and spinning it off into a bunch of books um, because they wanted to reproduce what was happening there. And I think their market research and their understanding of the community finally prevailed where they understood that this game is not that other game. And so they had a problem on their hands where they had a war, to, war you know, they had a battle tone with 70 plus war scrolls and with a lot of duplicated roles. And I think that when they began, when the, then the new round of sculpting came in with third edition, they decided to pivot hard. So rather than use that as the launch, right, of Hallowed Knights, right, as yeah. the as the heart of that launch in third edition, um, as the first of these new books to spin off, I think what they did decided to do was to pivot the line completely. Yep. Um, and and with that pivot, it was going to require a calling of units. And so in that sense, this may be a one-off for what happened to Stormcast. I'm not trying to provide an apologetic for GW. You know, I don't do that. But I wonder if this is not, in fact, a a product of bad de- bad product management of the line and a change of direction. And that's what we're seeing with at, at least the Stormcast portion of the colon. Yeah. Um, I, I suspect that's right. that that's probably what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it doesn't make it right, but it but it is the fruit of the product line management. And we are now suffering the consequences of that. But hopefully something like this won't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Zanben says, why is having multiple units filling the same role bad? Because then people don't take one of them and you keep swapping around. Because as you try to make one good, the other one... Because if one is even incrementally, microscopically better than the other, everybody just takes that one, nobody takes the other one. And right. then that well, that kit doesn't... like That kit then just sits there or whatever. Sell. until it doesn't sell. Well, maybe, maybe not. Selling is largely to do with releases and stuff like that. But it just... It, it, it doesn't get played, and so it becomes extra stuff. And so, yes, there's probably some diminishment of sales on the long tail... Although most kits sell when they initially come out, like I would guess, I, I don't know what percentage of a model's sales happen within the first like three months of its release, but I would bet it's a majority percentage. By the way, I bet it takes years to equal what you sell in the first three months. Um, I agree with that. But the but the point is, is that you it also makes it harder to balance the book because then you have to like keep shifting things around. Like the game just works better when you have sort of identified roles that things want to want to fill and like things they want to be this is your thing there's lots of roles you you know you can you can get there but um but it just works better when you have individual stuff for that right so but i agree with you tom i think you're absolutely right i mean i think that history is that that's obviously that's all theory craft but i think it's exactly correct so that's that's my theory as to why that's theory time um that that's why we have what we have and 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 why that discontinuation is different than what we saw with beast of chaos like it is something but it was also something that was very different than the rest of the calling of the line mm-hmm. um yeah. and i think hopefully it will be a one-off yeah um keith it's not that bad but it's like because they're they the way that they value uh inclusion is is it used in x percentage of lists and so on and so forth so like i but my understanding is by their competitive metric you're probably talking about only like 30 to 40 percent of of se war scrolls ever actually got used to the percentage that they're that they set for a internal balance target so yeah. that's which is a problem obviously not as bad as you're describing but still pretty terrible um yeah, so I mean, what what else can we say about the model calling except uh, if you're upset or sad or angry that your army, your thing, you know, part of what you were and what you enjoyed playing and what you enjoyed being on the table got cut, um, you're not wrong to feel those feelings. It super sucks. Period. Um, and they, it was only made worse. By the fact that they handled this so incredibly poorly from basically top to bottom in how this was done with the only exception being the amount of time they gave players to to do that to, to actually still yep. play with the stuff um but otherwise uh, just a real just a real terrible set of decisions uh 80 of the stormcast that i play with i have painted play with and built and play with um are sacrosanct they just are i love I hated the prior Stormcast 1.0 sculpts and 2. Point, or 3.0 were okay, but I loved the robes. I loved the flowy cloth. I loved all that mm-hmm. in my 
in my Stormcast models. And so, uh, like, this hits me hard. It's just, it's not the first time this has happened. <laughs> All right, Hades. I earned Hades' like. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, so at any rate, I know it's not a happy thing, but uh, but hit like at this point if you haven't already. A lot of you out there watching. So, you know, in the end, we're going to have to figure out what the new world looks like, and it's going to be up to them to try in whatever way they can to earn our trust back. But if I was them, if I was advising them what to do going forward, I would be crafting a marketing doc that actually responds to this. They won't. They won't. They don't kick up controversy. They see it as bad. But if it was me, I would absolutely put out a response to this. Um, And and I would be... Tackling it head on. Yes. And I would be clear about what the future of Warcry is, what's getting re-sculpted, using these things as replacements in other models. I I would correct all these previous mistakes. I would pull the handbrake so hard. You can't save all of this. Like, and and by the by, I would figure out whatever senior manager has made the dumb decision that things can't overlap and fire them. That's that simple. That person should not be employed at that company anymore. Period. I I don't know what else to say. It's the wrong choice. It's a terrible business decision. It makes no sense at all. I cannot picture the business case that says that makes sense. So somebody should be somebody should be canned. It's that simple. You should not be employed by this company anymore. That is the level of screw up you have done. So that's it. That's it and that's all. Okay, cool. With that, let's turn to some happier news. Uh well, it's not a board member because I don't think board members are getting that that down and detailed. Right? I mean, you did just call for Sapuku for, for whatever uh, whatever manager um, did that, but I didn't know. say they should like end their life. Like they can go live, so they can continue living. Okay. Oh, exile. Sorry. Human life Sorry. is valuable. They can continue living. They didn't do that, but they should not work at that company anymore. You make a decision that bad, you don't. You don't work there anymore. The fact that you're in management shouldn't shield you from that. If a frontline yeah. associate did something that stupid that made that many people that angry, they'd be fired five seconds after it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're in charge, if you're a manager, then the buck stops with you. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cool. Cool. Uh, let's move on to the next topic. Let's move on to some happier topics. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that was the most sad about this, uh, was that everything else for 4.0 is looking really fun and good. I hate that this came out and just like put a turd in the punch bowl for lack of a better term. Like I hate to use that I, term. I, I agree. Find it disgusting, but that's no. what it is. I um, agree. It's so much looks so good. Yeah. Like, everything, every other article they've put out has been really good and and gotten me really excited about the game. They just... Ugh, whatever. Okay, we've said enough about it. Moving on. Moving on to other things. We got the anatomy of a war scroll, Tom. So we got to look at the war scrolls and what they're going to consist yep. of. We got our Liberator war scroll. Obviously, we can see the change over to health. And uh, you can see Crit Mortal. Crit Mortal. So there you go. Uh, We also got um, clarity that spellcasting seemingly will be using the 2d6 roll. Yes. So before we get into that, though, what do you think of these liberators? Like, what what do you what do you think of this here, Tom? Like, what what what's your what's your take on on our on our on our updated libbies? I mean, a base three plus saves pretty good. Pretty, sure. pretty good. Um, I mean, like I, it suggests to me that the trajectory that we have been on of power seems to remain at least the same for killiness, for survivability. If this is your core stock standard troop, well, that's the question. That's I think that's assuming facts, not in evidence. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Maybe. What I mean by that is, 
Maybe. A lot of the game was baselined against Liberators previously, but that made Liberators feel underwhelming. What if the game's not baselined against Liberators anymore? In a previous article, they talked about the increased variance amongst the units, right? So yeah. what if this is like a good War Scroll? And what I mean by that is like weapon profile wise. Okay. Sure. What if your goblins sure. are like fives and fives? Yeah, I mean, then it's even more problematic, honestly. Um, like it's a real issue then. Because what that says to me is that you will never kill liberators. Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, again, if different you're on things, five you have different, five, different strokes for different things. Yeah. If they're on fives for fives, no rend, right? Mm -hmm. 40 goblins, again, on fives for fives, four rend, will not touch five liberators. Could be. I don't know. Might be that they like, might be that they that's don't. Math. You're assuming they don't have some other ability, right? Like their ability could be like overwhelming mob. So like at the end of the turn, if they're in combat with somebody that has a lesser unit strength than them or control score than them, they take, you know, D three mortal wounds or something or or D six or you know whatever stuff could happen. Like my point is, is that they they could they could be attacking this in other ways, right? I. I I, I wouldn't assume this is the baseline of the whole game is my point. Like we don't we don't know that. Could be, could be not. Sure. Sure. And all I'm simply saying is is that keeping them with this By the way, Liberators could also be like 150 points for five of these dudes. Sure. Sure. Right? Like that could be the new yep. baseline where it's like they're really they are the super elite, you know, lightning thunder gods they were supposed to be, and we actually point them accordingly and make them hyper elite. Right? That's another way it could go. So, you know, there you go. Like, like there, my point is, is that just looking at the stats wouldn't be enough. No, I agree with that. Like we would certainly need to know points to compare. Um, it just, it raises a flag for me is what I'm saying regarding the survivability and the killiness. Like if like either they are an elite troop truly. And if they're an elite, then man, I wonder what the rest of pointing Stormcast will look like. Like Stormcast used to have the problem of only being able to put like 20 models down at a thousand points. Right. Sure. And this would certainly reinforce that if that was the case. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, so time will tell. I'll say I like the crit mortal ability. Let me just talk about this USR because this is obviously our USRs here, right? Crit yeah. mortal. Yeah. When you roll a six, you do a critical hit. Right? So it's, it, so liberators hit hard for basic wow. troops, especially given their crit mortal ability. One of seven universal weapon abilities. Good. Seven. We got a number. I like seven. That's a low number. That's a memorable of number. Of weapon abilities, I not universal. That. Yeah, I know. They said yeah. there's... I understand. I'm just saying that's correct number of abilities so far is what I am sure. saying. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. It has a simple effect. An unmodified six to hit counts as a critical hit and this, ability, and this turns into mortal damage. Okay. Let me tell you why I like this. Because we didn't name it Devastating Blows. Okay. We named it Crit Mortal. Mortal. It, it, it identifies the thing that it's doing. It does what it says on the tin. That's right. Yep. If we're going to have these USRs, I like them being very, like, self-explanatory. Where the thing is the thing. Because, assumingly, the base rules tell you that a critical hit is when you roll a 6 to hit. Like, I'm assuming that's in the core rules, right? So that's a piece of information you already know. And it's mortal. So wait, which one did this? What, what did this do? Like, you read them once, it's going to be locked in your head. Right? And very easy to understand. So you don't need to remember, like, wait, which one is devastating uh, strikes versus yep. uh, banishing blows or something like that, right? You know, so so very clear, right? Yep. Um, so, okay, cool, good. I like that. This is a very simple war scroll, though, as they point out. Uh, by the way, I also like infantry champion, you know, so there's clearly some more of our yep. sort of keywording stuff so, going on down here yep yeah, both uh both faction keywords and then rule keywords down mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. yep the other thing to talk about is obviously objective control we had a good idea this was going to be coming so and then the stalwart defenders so like the way that your objective control works is if you got five liberators they each are one it's five total if they're uh contesting an objective wholly within friendly territory it goes up to eight which is awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah, it's not what, three per model. It, it's three to the score. Okay, and, that, and that's what I was going to say. Is it eight or 20? No, it's it's eight. It's very clearly explained that it's eight. Okay. 
the point of this being, and I'll tell you, like they they clearly explain that it's the to the to the score, which is different than the characteristic. But the reason I like that is because it, we're going to see it again in just a moment in the in the when we do the the command abilities article. Which let's face it, that sure. one's going to be some real some real spicy goodness because that command ability article has me real excited. But what I'm seeing here, Tom, is a bunch of changes from exponential to uh additive to additive yeah exactly yep so like it used to be it was much harder to mess with your control score without saying like every model counts as two okay well that's like exponential that's growth, multiplicative right? yeah. yes yeah, multiplicative right whereas this is additive on the on the top right you go from five to eight not five to ten or five to fifteen right so you have much more fine control when you're working with additive bonuses and we'll see it again. We'll see this thing again in a moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, what are we just ignoring, Alec, man? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, the other thing is... Uh, oh, yeah. Are we just going to... No more. I'm not sure. Alec, man, tell me what we're ignoring. That's fine. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with these dudes and what I expect we'll see uh, is I, I somebody asked in the comments, are we going to see less weapon options? I hope so. I really hope so. Just that's the weapon they use. It's called like, it's called goblin stabby weapons or whatever. I don't care. You know what I mean? My point is like, it doesn't and weapons inclusive. I don't need. No. Yeah. We mentioned it. Infantry keyword is now a thing. Yes. We mentioned it. Infantry is a keyword. Assumingly cavalry, all that kind of stuff, you know, yeah. So, yes, and which is great. Like, we'll see a scroll where we know how it interacts in a minute when we go to the command section. Yep. So, yes, I was going to talk about it there. And yes, bravery is gone. Bravery is dead. Oh, 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 oh. Bravery was always stupid. It either never mattered or mattered way too much, and it would have been bad if it mattered a lot. Kill it. Kill it with fire. I don't need it. Okay. So, good. Fine. And, I yes, I also like that we don't care, like, two hammers or hammer and shield, like, this is the weapon profile. Whatever. Go nuts. I'm Build what looks cool. What By the way, which is up. how I've always built my models anyways. I have never once given even the remotest care. Like, WYSIWYG and me are on different planets. It's not even close. So I have just looked at a model and went, what looks cool? Cool, that's the thing I'm going to build. And then when I set the unit down, I say what it is. It's this thing with this. Period. It's on my list. I have never cared. I will never care. You can't make me care. I don't want to care. Done. You were saying. I... Uh... Uh, I don't even know what I was going to go with other than, y yes, correct. Vince has never, ever, ever cared. No, um, what I would, uh, what I'm interested in is where they end up with stuff like, like they do show some nuance here, right? Between the great hammer and hammer. Yeah, or, sure. Like the, you can have, it's not that you can't have a special weapon in a unit. Sure, that's fine and neat, right? You can have a little bit of it. My point is just for like the bulk of your troops, just make it the weapon. Well, for me, who was, for example, building Zangor this week, and we're like, I need two mutants, and I need four great weapons, and I need for the room, and I have a champ, and a banner bearer, and a horn blower, and then for the last troop, I need to choose either a shield or dual weapons, right? Like, um, like going through that, I just wonder, like, how, to what degree, like, where are they going to cut that line? Right yeah. between um, between uh, weapon these extra weapon profile stuff and not or the another great another great example is something like thunderers sure like those types of weapon teams like are we ever going back to the crazy or are we simplifying well, like Bruce did I right? could see it be where some things where the unit where it's like defined by that still has some different options I mean thunderers are just a forty k unit that snuck their way into uh, into Six into eight. AOS. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Like, it could be very much. But that's a that's a 40K thing. Uh, the, uh, let's, but I want to go back to some comments here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, 
Okay. Um, uh, Gareth says I'm banned. That's fine. I accept, Gareth. Uh, all right. And then Arrested at the Waffle House says I, do, I will destroy WYSIWYG. You're absolutely right. I'm going to fight that war right beside your brother. Uh, Warpstone Enjoyer said, have you ever magnetized a weapon option even just for fun? Hell no. Hell I have. no. Never. I have. And I never will, and it's a giant waste of time. What insanity. My, I put my, my model to paint it and play it. I'm not, my, I'm not carrying around nonsense. My Storm Fiends are all magnetized, so I can yeah. swap all their little weapon stuff with the ca the cables and everything are magnetized. It's delightful. Yeah, absolutely insane and dumb. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, like, jokes aside, if, if magnetizing things makes you happy because you like to have it perfectly represented in the way you want, go nuts. But no, I would never. I would never. Life is precious and short. Uh, I got things to do. Um, this is the guy with this thing, and this is the guy with this thing. My Storm Fiends are just like a menagerie of weapons that I just put on them because I thought it looked cool. Okay. Okay. So, that said... I did I did build a storm strike chariot this week, and I felt bad when I saw the war scroll because I was like, "Oh, there is a difference between the bow and the spear." Like I knew there would be, but but in my you know I was like, "Ah, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just build this one because I like the look of it." And then and then there is a difference, and so now I'm sad. This one has this is my storm strike chariot. As you can see on my list, it has the bow. Where's the bow? On his back in the thing. Somewhere in the chariot. It's down on the ground. He'll pick it up when he needs to shoot. How about you don't worry about it? It has the bow. I will not be making attacks with a spear. I will be making attacks with a bow. It's very simple. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, a spear is just a big arrow. Thank you, big beefy. That's exactly right. That's basically the same thing. Okay. Cool. Uh, then we have our phase coloration. And this, I really like this. I know that there's, like I saw when they when they talked about the color coding and we'll talk about the commands and stuff, this was like a weird take. I saw a bunch of people jumping in. So like all the phases are color coded and you'll see it with the, the these abilities here that they're, they're color coded yep. as well. And they have the appropriate like icons for what type of ability they are. Nice combination of UX there. I saw a bunch of people suddenly jump in, like just, just parachute in, okay? And start complaining about colorblind people. And I'm like, first of all, there's way more people complaining here than are actually colorblind. That's number one. Okay. That's so, like, I'm curious about the level of white knighting going on here. But for people who are legitimately colorblind, which is completely fair, that's why they still labeled everything with the phase you're supposed to use it and where it gets used. So you don't have to actually reference the colors at all. They still say where the thing happens. Now, I would have liked it if on the passive abilities, they were a little more clear. That's where I think mm -hmm. they fell down, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it, like, it, they didn't actually didn't add the extra text. For all the active abilities, they have it very clearly labeled. Yeah. Okay. Um, But it's like... Well all of that, hold on, I'm not done yet, okay? Tom, how are our abilities right now? They're a block of text. Yeah, I, I know, I understand. I get that. That just, like, have, when you're supposed to use them somewhere in the text, okay? Like, yeah, it's still a way better world than it was before because the timing of the thing is written at minimum at the top or right away when it's happening. So, like, you have an icon, you have a color, you have text. This is the UX holy trinity. When you use all three in synergy to then create a positive UX experience while still remaining, like, WCAGAA compliant. Okay? So... Um, good? I don't, like, I don't understand. I'm so confused. It's definitely an upgrade, period. And then how much of an upgrade it is, is going to vary. Because, yeah, for people who have colorblind challenges, which is real, I'm not minimizing that in any way. They needed to still, like, be very clear with their labeling. 
Okay. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, I have some questions um, just simply about, uh, and like, it's not something that can be in, answered here, but it's how this, some of this stuff interfaces with what we have seen already. And yeah, so sure. like, I already have FAQ questions about these war scrolls in light of the new command point system, for example, that's been revealed. Yeah. But we can talk about that. Sure. But this is a big scroll. This is a big Papa scroll, right? We're talking about that here. We've got, we can see the keywords. We've got a spell on here. He's got his invocation of Nagash, very powerful. You know, he can, it, he can. It, go ahead. It says your hero phase. Yes, your hero can phase. You, yeah. Can you command point ability to cast that in their hero phase? Uh Oh, because it says your hero phase, right? Because it says your hero phase, right? Like it's coded to that. I don't know. I, I would assume the core rules will explain that whenever we see them, right? We'll, we'll get to yeah. that in a minute. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, like, I, I'm sure that that's probably explained. Um, we have a rampage here, and I like the, I really like the keywording here, or the coding of once per turn army. So you know that, mm -hmm. you know, this is a thing. You get one you rampage. Army-wide. Yeah, exactly. You get one rampage, right? So that's cool. And, yeah, like, good stuff like nagash certainly seems like he's pretty potent he's weak sauce in melee but he's a hell of a spellcaster so and he's a big tough dude you know 18 wounds on a three up save uh, like seems good to me okay and there's no two and he's got a five up here. board this is there's where no we also see here. like wizard nine which i assume means he can cast nine spells like that's traditionally been doesn't feel like that much of a stretch given that's what nagash has always done he can fly he has a five up ward Okay. Cool. Yep. Yep. Also, he's a war master. And he's a war master. Yep. And a monster, for whatever that means. Um, the I'm interested to see what is going, what it's going to mean uh, for, what was the thing that I was looking at? Oh, um, the fact that both his hit and wound values are only threes, sure. um, where previously I think we had some twos. Um, I think that that's significant because that could, if we have gods that are only hitting and wounding on threes, I think that that could be potentially indicative of design power direction moving forward. Like that. I mean, may maybe. Maybe. maybe, maybe, maybe it's just because he's not a melee guy. I mean, like, yeah, he's a god, but he's like a nerd. He's a nerd. I I understand that. He's like king that. of the nerds, but this dude's a nerd. Okay. Like, is he is he more king of the nerds than Teclas? They're both king of the nerds. They okay. they they can have a little fight over who's who's the actual true king of the nerds. But like, you know, if if but the 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 fact that he would have that melee profile, like I wouldn't be shocked if just a pretty good elf had a better melee profile than him as far as like hit and wound goes, <laughs> because he's just a nerd. That's like a a martial paragon, right? Like, sure, he's also the nerd the size of a building. I don't care. Who cares? Why would that affect his hit and wound? Because maybe he has a bigger sword. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I mean, like, at that point, then you could say the same thing about giants. That giants should only be on fours or threes or whatever. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm completely with that. I'm not... Yep, sounds right to me. They're just, like, big, dumb idiots. Like, yes, they should absolutely be on crappy numbers. They should just do, like, massive damage when they connect, right? That's always been the thing. I argued for that forever ago, and we got halfway there the last Sun's book. They just didn't make yeah. the damage enough, right? Um, So, yeah, I mean, I thought it was interesting. The Staff of Power is just to his casting rolls, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And then he can dodge miscast, but it's not to like his ability to unbind or whatever, assuming that that's still a thing. Oh, well, so, uh, yeah, we don't, we haven't seen anything about unbinding yet. So we don't know what that even means. Sure. I mean, like, assumingly it's still around, but yes, it's, it's whatever's happening. You ain't getting the plus two to it. And then the, I love the, the, the new battle damage, which has replaced the, clearly the monster table, right? That's what this is. So if it has ten or more damage points, you subtract yeah. three from its power level. I assume its power level is his is his wizard level down there. I'm just gonna yeah. I'm gonna make that logical inference. So yep. okay. And I agree with Rick, who said reducing the amount of twos and twos I think would improve the game. I agree. Do you um, think that we'll see different versions of Nagash for the different armies? I think it'll all probably be the same scroll, just with different keywords for the armies. I don't think they'll change them. 
He's the same guy. It's the same avatar or whatever, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, last thing I'll say on the War Scrolls is, Tom, we mission accomplished, buddy. We kept it. We kept the game. Guess, choose your fate. I love how they also let him use like cups or containers, just in case somebody yeah. doesn't have two hands. Right. Yeah, it checks out. Yeah. Checks like, out. the average number of hands is less than two. Yep. If you have two hands, sure. you have a higher than average number of hands. Um, but like, I, I mean, love the, but the average. You've correct. Yes. <laughs> um, but that's why I love, uh, that's why I like, I love silly little mini games like this. When they occur on, on, you know, super powerful characters like Nagash, that's fine. Uh, Ramium, I think power level is just his wizard level. That's seems like probably a logical Which is, i.e. how many spells you can cast. Yeah, I assume he goes from like nine spells to six spells or something. Like, I'm just inferring because that's the clearly the monster replacement. And on his current monster chart, like you beat him up and he casts less spells. So I'm just assuming that's the same thing that happens. So Yeah, I love the flexibility of Invocation of Nagash as well. Yeah. Oh like, my god, it, arrested that, at Waffle House. Got a hand to him. So good. Yeah. So good. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's Nagash. And that was the War Scrolls. Like, I mean, want to see more? Show us more. Um, they mention in, in this article that we're going to get into, like, the army breakdowns soon. Uh, so I hope we get, like, three War Scrolls per army breakdown. At least, I hope. Like, yeah. Base us... troop. Like... An, an elite troop and then a hero or something. Yeah, sure. That's how it should be. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, Assistant Ref. You're not wrong. Uh, or if I'm a Thrycreen, I'm really I stand a great chance. Uh, I am large and in charge if I'm the if I'm a Thrycreen. So watch out for your Thrycreen opponents, everybody. They're gonna be they're gonna be tricking you. Um, okay. Let's move over to command points because or command stuff, whatever commands in general. Because this was uh, this was the spice right here. Yeah, um, I'm, like I'm, I'm glad they dropped this today so we can talk about it. Yeah, no, this one was really good. Okay, um, okay, so command points. As we hinted to previously, command points are a tightly controlled resource. Each player gets four command points at the start of the battle round to spend over the course of that entire round. There are 10 different commands to issue. Any command points you have been spent by the end of the battle round are gone forever. And then we know that the underdog gains one extra command point uh, over the battle round. And we know that you can gain an extra one if you have less auxiliaries than your opponent. Okay. So that would mean the maximum you could get if it is would six be per six turn. per round. Mm -hmm. Or per round, yes, sorry. Yes, which lasts over both you and your opponent's turn. Yep. Okay. Which is which is currently basically where we were at two per turn. It's a similar style. Going second gave you three, obviously, and stuff like that. And there are things that did yep. extra commands. We'll have to see. They've said there's nothing in the game that gives you know extra command points. How much in the game though lets you like double issue or triple issue because that's effectively double, a free yep. command point or like issue without issue it without using a command or something like that. Yeah. Did all of that stuff yep. go as well? If so, then this is a much tighter ecosystem like by a lot, right? Yeah. So, yep. we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see that that hopefully, all to remains to be seen. Hopefully, this means total eclipse took took a walk. Mm. Yeet it into the sun. Into okay. The eclipse sun. And yes, and the underdog is the person who, at the start of the round, has less victory points. First thing to discuss. Uh, so, Tom, you get an extra command point for being at less victory points. Do you think, would, would this make you want a sandbag? Never. Okay. Um, because giving up victory points is giving up, uh, potentially, your, your total points for the tournament, depending on how the tournament scored. Yeah. And so I'm never going to sandbag if my battle tactic points are counting into my total, right? Like I'm not, I'm not going to throw any, anything, um, knowing that it could potentially affect my rank in the event as a whole. So it, I'm just not going to do it. But again, that's going to depend on how TOs build scoring sheets. Okay. Okay. 
What if that's not factored in? Let's assume it's not. Let's assume, let's let's use hey. Let's imagine we all live in Halo's world. It's all just win loss, win loss draw, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still not gonna say. I may double. I may take a double and give up the battle tactic, but you're inherently giving up points when you when you choose to double. I may double sure. if I know I'm gonna seal the game. Like if I'm gonna basically lock the game up. Um, and I know it won't affect my final standing. I could uh, I could give that up, but I don't know that I'm ever going to intentionally like underscore in a round and to try to become the underdog. Yeah, like it's to me, it's not worth this command point. Okay. Um, in the in the current economy, as I've seen it up up until now, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Like I I don't want to like I don't want to minimize that, but I'm never going to to try to game the system that way. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's interesting. We'll have to we'll have to look and see exactly how that that works. Um, Assistant ref said GW command points are strictly limited. Also, GW you get four to six per battle round. That's pretty tightly limited, especially because as we'll see, not all commands are one command point anymore. Uh, right. And so, like that's that's it's a it's a thing. Um, yeah. Okie dokie. Um. Sidney Straub said, semi-specific question. Do you feel the balance around command points will balance weirdly with how Holy Havoc is played? I assume the rules will be updated, but I also assume you have input on those. Um, I have no idea. We'll have to see the full rules, and then I'm sure Tom and I will both work with Reed and Steve and everything to, to make sure that Havoc is yeah. aligned. Inherently, I don't think anything here is un... Um, I don't think anything here is un... or incompatible with Holy Wars is what I would say. Yeah. Um, because basically what you would have with Holy Wars is you would just develop a new module sure. um, for how these things work. Like, they have given yeah, us yeah. the technology for for doing, like, narrative. It's a battle especially. pack, and it uses these, these it modules. It uses these, these modules. And, yeah. Or that it uses the Holy, the Holy Wars command module rather than just yeah, the yeah. Command, mo command point module. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, Reactions. Uh, you declare an ability. You tell your opponent which ability is being used. If the ability has declare instructions, resolve them at this step. You use reactions, uh, starting with the active player. The players alternate using any abilities with an appropriate reaction timing, and then you resolve the effect. This is very important, Tom, because it's going to come into your this this part right here is going to answer a yeah. question that you you had. Okay, it's like this is this text is meaningful, right? Yep. It seems yep. very obvious, but it, it could there's a, it could be a lot of nuance in there. Obviously, this is more magic like, you know, like yeah. I'm gonna put this it's on the stack. Account. Responses, you know, I'm gonna attempt to resolve this. Okay, yep. so they show all out attack and all out defense. This is the command point cost. These are still one each. They're still the same things they were used by. So reaction, you declared an attack ability or reaction opponent declared an attack ability. Okay. Cool. Uh, so you use the attack ability put a plus one to hit you use the uh, opponent declares an attack you use plus one to save Okay. Yep. I'm curious as to how much other plus one to save will still be around like is save stacking dead is this like our only source of generic plus one to save could be they could, I, like, I they mean, could eliminate a lot so. of that from the game like I hope mystic shield is like a six up ward or something like that right like I hope that they, they just does mystic shield also. exist I don't know. It may not, but it's also in in kind of the core zeitgeist of what AOS is. It's been in every edition, and so sure. I don't know if it's achieved sacred, you know, cow status or not. But yeah, uh, I mean, I think that like I agree with you. It should like if they if they keep it, it should be like a six up word or whatever, right? But like my hope would be just gut the plus one to save stuff effects out of the game. Just gut it. Okay, like yep. these should be yep. almost none. Okay. And, you know, if this is it, then it becomes very, very, very meaningful, right? And maybe a few scattered abilities that are on, like, specific war scrolls in specific armies that are meant to be heavy armor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Uh, okay. They need to be more clear on the order of events, because when do effects happen if you have an effect and then a reaction, what happens? Well, you... Funny story, declare the thing and if it has any instructions then you resolve them so you would do everything that resolves on the declare step and then once it's done the active player uses their reactions and then any resolve effects happen after that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like 
assumingly all the we haven't seen the base abilities yet but assumingly they use that structure and they're clear so but i mean yeah again it raises questions about and this is the one that i was talking about about like four to victory mm -hmm. reaction with the chart like the i mean I, I know i'm jumping ahead for you hmm. but um it's relevant here which is a lot of the what people have been stating they're assuming and i did the same thing that when you declare your forward of victory, which is the reaction to charge and where you re-roll your charge roll, um, I was assuming, like everybody else, that the that you're having to make that decision to re-roll before you roll it the first time. Right, which may and, not be true. And, which may not be true. And the reason why is to, to jump back to the using abilities thing where it says declare the ability. It says if the ability has to declare instructions, resolve them at this step. Vince pointed out to me that it very well could be the case that in the description of making a charge, when you declare a charge, you roll that charge in the declaration. Right. And if you do, then the reaction could be after the result has already been made. Correct. So like if... Like you could imagine a sequence like this. We haven't seen the base charge ability yet, but like, but let's yeah, say we, that, so we don't know how they've written it. Like declare, you choose a unit, and you declare they will charge. Roll two d six. This is your charge roll. That's the that's the declare step, right? You do that. You roll. Use reactions. Okay. Step two. You declared a charge ability. I didn't like my roll. I will use forward to victory. I re-roll it, right, and resolve that yeah. effect. And then the effect then of the charge base ability, the resolve the effect, the effect part is probably you move the distance you rolled of the charge roll. Yeah, and, and actually Gareth is right. Like when you look at Nagash's war scroll, like the the rolling 2d6 to cast a spell is part of the de declaration Yeah, of casting a spell. Um, and so there is precedent for this with casting a spell. It's very likely that there's going to be precedent for it with charging. Meaning yep. that you, you will likely have the knowledge of the charge result before you react to it with a reroll. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's just we have so, to see those base abilities. Right. But yes, well, like, so we're still I think a lot of people were roll. assuming facts, not in evidence, saying you have to call this before you make your charge roll. Like, no, that we haven't seen the base ability. We don't know how it's structured. And this is like, this is pretty clear as long as they actually stick to this format, right? I do my things, I complete these steps. I cast the spell, I tap the mana, I put it on the stack. That's what happens yep. before everybody else gets to respond, right? And then people respond and make reactions. And then if no reactions, spell resolves, ETBs comes into play, whatever happens, right? And there's, like, a, and there's a question of can you like counter charge and then respond to your counter charge with a um, a forward to victory? And the answer is, is if you have the command, I probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it seemed to be the case. Yeah. Um, unless, again, there's some kind of other thing we're not aware of, obviously, not having seen all of the core right. rules, like, you know. Right. So. Okay. New commands. Uh, rally. Declare. Pick a friendly unit that is not in combat and use this ability. That's all that's in the declare step, right? Yep. And then, so then, you know, assumingly reactions would happen if, they, if there is any that exist. Um, oh yeah, that's right. That's right, Tom. Yes, thank you. Gareth said, no, a unit can't use two commands in a phase. They did say that. Thank you. Thank oh, you, Gareth. Okay. That's there right. you go. I had forgotten that that was in there. Okay. Yep. No, that's a good call. So, uh, rally. Effect. You make six rally rolls for uh, on a d6. For each four plus, you receive one rally point. Rally points can be spent to either heal a unit, heal one a unit, which is assumingly just you heal one health of the unit, or you can spend a number of rally points equal to the health characteristic of that unit to return a slain model to that unit. You can spend rally points in any combination of the above. Unspent rally points are then lost. I love this. This is yeah, such a it, better rally it, mechanic. Yeah, agreed. And it and it gets such a, a feel, like it's such a good feel good, uh, especially when you're dealing with multi-wound models. Like, man, the number of times that I couldn't put models like Hort, like Hex Race back into a unit, right? Because I had I had an un, I had I had a wounded model, and because I had a wounded model, I couldn't put, put new models back. Um, and so I love the way that they they split the baby on these abilities for rally. It means yes, it's very hard to rally high wound units. Like um, Haiti said, I kind of like this rally change, but does this mean you can't bring back units with uh, greater than six health? Yes, unless you have some kind of ability to 
affect this rally roll in some way. Which right. the nice part about what this is on the linear rather than uh, geometric here is you could imagine a unit that's like, if this unit makes a rally roll, roll, roll one dice. additional dice. Yeah, or right. roll two additional dice or something like that, right? And so it it hasn't, like, whereas if all you can do is change it to a five up or a four up like we have previously, it's just, you just, the, the numbers you get back just skyrocket, right? Yep. And so whereas yep. here, it's much more controlled. I like yep. this a lot. This is actually a very reasonably well-written rally. And not only that, like, there's not just one or two levers here to pull. There's actually a number of levers. Because I can imagine abilities that increase the number of dice. I can imagine abilities that reduce the target number. And I can imagine abilities that increase the healing number. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the, all yeah. of that are, like, levers that they could pull sure. here um, for these calculations, which is exciting. Yep. So there's lots of different ways they could mess with it. That's exactly right. Now, uh, Haiti said, so in terms of commands, what does use mean? Does it mean benefit from, issue, or receive? Well, there's no more issuing or receiving, because that was the other thing they clarified in this article. All of that is gone. You just use the command. You're the active like, player. You use the thing. There's no more like you have to... Heroes don't issue. Nobody issues. It just happens. Yep. It's just a thing that's done. There's no more you have to have a hero or a champion or be a lead or have a totem or yada, 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 yada. All no range. Mm -hmm. Right. You just yep. do it. No bubble management. Okay. Love it. Love it. Yep. I mean, like, yes, you know, Rob complained a little bit about the fact that this is lowering the skill floor. The skill and ceiling. I'm okay with that. No, or the skill floor is like the ceiling would be. Uh, he how, means the top like, end. It's a top end decision to, to properly no, balance but, your models. But his frustration was this. The problem is, is that this lowers the floor because you're not having to manage ranges anymore. Like, yes. yeah, he, We're he, saying the same thing, but he said ceiling. At any rate, I watched the video too. Um, okay. Regardless, I love it. I love that for new players, they can just be like, I, I have four of these things to do. I'm going to do this one. Yes, cool. correct. Like, yeah, yes, go do that. We don't need to measure anything. Just do it. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I don't know that I agree with this take. Like, yes, I, mean, I suppose it's factually true, but I don't think it's a bad thing, I guess, is what I would say. Um, yeah. but he had a lot of other thoughts in that video that I did agree with. Um, you know, like bubble management was never a skill testing thing that I think was a positive aspect of the game. That's, Correct. that's what I'll say. Correct. Okay. It was always a feel bad. Yeah. And then redeploy. Love this change. Enemy movement phase. Pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability effect. Each model in that unit can move up to D6 inches. That move cannot pass through or end within the combat range of an enemy unit so cool you can read it you just it doesn't have to deal with you're just doing it at the end of their their phase uh after they've taken all of their actions and the, the active players taken all of theirs you're now you you get to use all of yours they've moved all their people you say cool i'll redeploy this guy yeah, uh, this is actually like amazing because it's, it doesn't check range anymore. Like, did a unit move within nine inches of the redeploy? Mm -hmm. None of that. And so, stuff that is historically like four inch move, awesome. G gives me another way to get those Grave Guard into combat, right? Like, sure. they're redeploying every enemy, every yeah, sure. phase. We're moving up D6. Let's do this. So, yeah, yeah. love it. Yep. Interestingly, it also counts as a move run. Did you catch that? Yeah, I did. Right. I did. So, because it has the run keyword, then it's going to stop you from doing the counter charge later in the turn because you, a charge yep. ability and charge abilities can't be used if you've ran in the same turn. So like little clever things like that I, I'm enjoying that I that I catch, right? So, yep. okay. All right, now let's get to the, the con controversy. Okay, let's get to the ones that were the hot, the new ones. I okay. don't know that these are really controversy, were they? I don't know. People, Some people thought the sky was falling when they saw covering fire. Um, so first thing to state is they've said that the, the shooting ranges came down in this edition or whatever, right? They've, they've stated that we'll see how true that is, but that's, that's what they've said. And so covering fire enemy shooting phase, pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability, resolve shooting attacks for that unit, but all the attacks must target the nearest visible enemy unit. And you must subtract one from the hit rolls for those attacks. Um, okay. 
I love it. I like, you know, I I love the idea of my ironclad shooting twice per turn. Sure. Like per round, let me say it that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, like, how good this is will be a lot based on what does the shooting look like in the new edition. Okay. So, yeah. you know, like if shooting is shorter range, if shooting has, uh, you know, if it, there's like basically no mortal damage or whatever on shooting anymore, which is what should happen, then like a lot of things change, right? Um, yeah. But you, there is counterplay to it, obviously, because you they can only shoot the nearest visible enemy unit. So, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and minus love... one to hit is obviously a significant, it is a significant penalty when you're doing it off turn. Especially depending on if you know how much things like positive to hits are gone, right? And yep. what do base hit numbers look like? Like you could imagine the ironclad having a lot of fours to hit, right? And uh, and like so off turn when you're shooting this thing, it's on fives, whereas on turn and you're all out attacking, it's on threes. That is a very different level of output from those guns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll see again. Um, it's the kind of thing where, like, is one point too good? I don't know. Um, maybe. I'm not sure how good this is. It depends a lot on what the shooting looks like in the game. And then counter charge, which is two points, which is not in combat, and you get to charge. You charge off turn. You charge in the enemy phase. Very powerful right. ability, pretty obviously, hence why it's two points. No question there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um... And then, finally, the last two, Magical Intervention and Power Through. Uh, I can't take credit for this. I don't remember what video this came up in, but Magical Intervention, somebody called it Unleash Spell. Okay? This is not... I cannot take credit for that, but I thought that was genius. Um, yeah, but it's, you know, enemy hero phase. You can cast a spell or use a prayer or a, a, a chant a prayer as if it were Love your it. hero phase. I would assume that that answers your question, Tom, because it says, as if it were your hero phase, hence the command abilities yeah. that say your hero phase are answered there, right? Yeah. But you subtract one from casting or chanting rules. Okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, like, if unbind exists, how that works. Is it, do you just always get an unbind? Do you, like, what does that look like, right? And, like, can you unbind in your own hero phase, like, depending on how they've worded the core rules? Sure. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, right. Assumingly, there would be like the the nature to unbind or something is probably an action that's like reaction, like an enemy casts a spell, right, or something like that. So right, but 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 we haven't seen any of that on the core war scroll for Nagash. Yeah, and yeah. so if that's the case, like that's not something that it sits on the war scroll level. It would have to be in the core rules yep. or a function of like wizard, wizard nine or whatever that means, right? Yeah. Um. So it'll be interesting to see how they do how they go about it or if it's just if you have a wizard you may unbind on right. the battlefield could be yeah yeah right. like old world style one of my favorite things yep. is just like just unbind just go for it yep okay uh and then finally power through which is for like chariots and monsters and stuff like that where you can quite literally do this thing where at the end of the turn you pick an enemy unit in combat with it to be the target it has to have a lower health characteristic than the unit using this ability you do d3 mortal damage then the unit can Move a distance up to its move characteristic, pass through and end that move within the combat ranges of enemy units that were in combat with it at the start of the move, but not other enemy units. It does not have to end the move in combat. So you can quite literally just power through, keep your, have your chariot, just keep driving right on, yep. or your big monster yep. can wade through. Just cool. Um, very cool. Very cool ability there. I really like that. Um, and then they gave us the Storm Strike Chariot, wherein we saw now anti infantry plus one rend, another one of those keywords. So anti-infantry yep. plus one rend. Very easy to read. Got it. If I attack an infantry model, my rend goes to two. Yep. All right? Yep. And crit two hits. Okay. So when I roll a six, it becomes two hits. Yep. And charge plus one damage. When I charge, this damage becomes two. Okay. See? Like, I haven't seen any of these rules, but I feel like I've got them. I feel like I've got them. And, and companion. And Those companion. are attacks not being made by the by the storm cast, but by the companions on the base. Yep, your beaks, beaks, uh, getting them beaks going. Okay, uh, and then this threw a lot of people. Let's talk about this real quick. 
Uh, Azure unleashed any charge phase. This unit, if this unit charged in this phase, pick an enemy unit within one inch of it to be a target. Roll a D3 on a two plus. Inflict an amount of mortal damage on the target equal to the roll. Tom, what does that mean? When I roll a die, what, what's happening here? I roll a D3 on a two plus. Um, so I inflict an amount what, of mortal damage on the target equal the to the roll. The way that I would read that would be this. On a D3, so... You roll a dice, you get a result from one to three on a two plus, right? So on a, on the die face of three, four, five, six. Yes. You're going to inflict amount of damage equal to the target, equal to the roll. Now, my gut is to say that it's either two or three mortals because yeah. the roll is the roll of the D3. Right. Not the roll of the die face, which is Correct. a d6. Yes. Okay. So that's how I read this. Yeah, I think that's I think that's very clear. Yes, I agree. Now, I get the confusion and the frustration. Okay. Well, we'll have to see if if we'll have to see if how rolling a d3 is explained in the core rules. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you know, like. But yes, if you roll a one or two, you do no damage. If you roll a three or four on the d6, you do two mortal two wounds, damage. Two, two mortal damage. Yeah. If that's that's going to take a long time to switch in my mind. If you roll a five or six, you do three mortal damage. There you go. Yeah. And yes, Jonathan yeah. Straw, I did see the July 2024 date that got scrubbed off the Chariots War Scroll. Yeah, originally when they published this, Tom, they published it, it with July, July 2024. Yeah, Hilarious. Which tell me that? Like it's. it's I love how be... they tried to wheel it back. Guys, it's too late. Cat's out of the bag. Just leave it. Why are you making the intern do that and, work? And, and, and for anybody that's been around here for any amount of time, we could tell you it's coming out the first, probably the second week of July. Mm -hmm. That like, that's, that's, that's when they release new editions. They've always released new editions in that window, period. Yeah. No, Ramian, I wasn't just real quick here. Power through doesn't say yeah. anything about monsters, chariots. No, 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 no. I, I was just using as examples. Like, it could just be your six-wound hero powers through a five-wound hero, right? And kills him or something. Like, sure, certainly. Anybody could power through. I was just using it as... Because you have to have a higher health than the target you're powering through, I was just giving, like, the common examples of what they clearly are, are intending you to use it for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yes, absolutely. I wasn't I wasn't meaning to limit that. It turns it into one roll. It's reducing the rolling, right? Instead of roll a die to check and then roll a die for effect, it's just one roll that does the thing. That's the advantage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, with Celestial Blaze, you're having to roll two dice because you're doing a D3 Mortals and a D6 movement. Yes, which sure. Are two, two separate results. Yeah. Womp womp. You know, yep. we, we can't get away with, from it for, with everything. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, this looks like an interesting uh, uh, unit, and it has the War Machine key keyword, which ha I have all kinds of questions. Okay. What are your questions? Like, what is the what War is Machine that? keyword? What does that right, mean? Right, right. Right, because like this is where Fly lives, and this is where um, Ward lives. Mm -hmm. Like those things obviously have some amount of rules packaged underneath them. Yeah, sure. What does War Machine mean? Could be nothing. Could be like a type. Could be like infantry or War Machine or cavalry has no rules on its own. It only occurs here. Like you could imagine Maybe. something says like anti War, anti -war Machine War plus Machine. one rend or plus one damage or I don't know whatever. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, you could imagine that, so or it could mean something else. It could mean like this unit has some special thing about it, right? Because in the game, so War Machines all do this. How many general keywords do we have? We have anti-infantry, we have crit, we have charge, companion. What else? Is that it? I'm trying to think back to the Nagash scroll. Um, we have... Nagash, he didn't have any. He, he had no weapon abilities. He didn't have any weapon abilities. That's, that's what we've seen and, so far. Yep. Yeah, so we have four of the seven. Yeah. Some of these could be like, they could be counting. They could be like double counting. Like we saw crit two hits and crit mortal. I don't know if that's yeah. one or two, right? I don't know. I, I think that's one, I'm guessing. Okay. Like it triggers an effect on a crit. And then under that, this the subcategory gives the effect of that. Could Just be. because I don't think like anti-infantry two damage would be different than anti-infantry plus one red. Sure. Uh, assistant ref said war machine means it's bad and it's overcosted. Love it. Uh, the, uh, the, 
and distracted satrap said the name of the driver is war machine yeah that's yeah absolutely they're just a big fan of the band um so yeah i mean you know it's there you go okay cool and that's the that's the commands overall like i said other than this stupid article that came out about that everything else i've sort of for um everything else for 4.0 i've seen i've really liked i like this clear sequencing of abilities the new commands look really interesting you know a lot of a lot of you know, reserve full judgment on is anything broken or too good or too bad until obviously we see all the underlying rules and how they work yeah we but, need core rules and we need points before you can begin to say what's broken and what's overpowered right exactly um but i think that all in all you know, there's a lot of reasons to be excited. It seems like we're getting a game that's going to be have a lot of similarities to what uh, 3.0 is that will be comfortable, but a lot of, like, cleanup, streamlining, while still hopefully having enough variance here. So, I mean, let's we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Vicious, Vicious Goose asked if Vanguard boxes will be spearheads. Um, the answer is, is we don't know, but in the image for spearheads for hashtag new AOS, they used the three spearhead boxes that we do have plus a bunch of, uh, uh, and all the other images in that, in that composite image are Vanguard boxes um, as well. When they in the video, when they were talking about it, they were talking about how awesome the new spearhead format is. And they showed the Indrasa spearhead fighting the Nurgle Vanguard box right, um, with those contents. And so at this point, my running assumption is that the Vanguard boxes we have are going to be Spearhead, but some of them may end up getting updated or additional uh, Spearhead boxes will get released for some factions. Like yeah, I can they, imagine... Yeah. They, they stated that the Vanguard boxes will get become Spearhead boxes. Now, that doesn't mean we oh, don't know they? that, like... Yeah, they did. That doesn't mean okay. we won't get some new ones added in as well. Like, potentially, there could be a new... Uh, like, obviously, with, with Stormcast and... and, and um, Skaven when they when they have the new models, assumingly those will get like new spearheads or something, right? The um relatedly, uh one, I'm glad that I bought um uh the one magazine, uh, because it's replacing all my stormcast. Not that that helps anybody else, but it may be time to go get a hatchet magic magazine subscription if you need to re restock your stormcast models. But um the next version of that, whenever they release the next magazine in two years or whatever, if they follow the 40K model, which they've always followed, each month will be a different Vanguard box. Sure. So just just something to think about. Yep. For those that are that that this interests them. All right. Anything else you want to say, Tom, before we call it a night here? Uh, I'll say this while you're thinking. Hey, everybody. If you haven't hit like yet or subscribed or done all those things that make dings, you should do those. You will become at least probably 10% cooler I would guess somewhere at least I mean that's not not a small amount of cooler all right what do you what any final thoughts Tom um, I'm excited uh, I'm I'm deeply uh, I'm deeply saddened for those that have lost models have had their models forcibly retired and myself included in that right um, this last week it, it is disappointing it's disappointing the trajectory that they have been on. Um, that said, it's um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for where we're at and where the the what we're seeing. I agree with all of that. Uh, this this is one more army I get to add to my legends cabinet, Tom, because uh, obviously you know I have a BOC army, uh, so it gets to it's to join that. Uh, will I put it on squares? No. Uh, I already have my Tomb Kings, my Bretonians. I'm happy in the old world with those too. Um, it'll just, it'll be retired and take its happy place in the retired armies of things that I have in the past, but it's, that's easy for me to say. I have the luxury of that because I have so many painted armies. It's not everybody who can say that and it's a shame, but I am hopeful. I agree with you. I think that there's a lot of great looking stuff here. It looks like the team, it looks like the team that's making AOS 4 that clearly didn't make any of those decisions about, you know, retirements and stuff like, yeah, that's not their... They didn't write this article. They didn't make these decisions likely about what got retired and whatnot. That's all people who aren't rules writers, okay, um, are doing a really bang up job. And so I do want to keep those two things separate because it looks like the team put together something really good here. I'm excited about everything I've seen so far, and uh, I, I I I am really excited to see what Matt and his team have created here. Um, now that the the so the shackles are off and they get they got to start from the ground up and write something that they thought was going to be really fun, 
So I'm very excited. And uh, shout out to whoever framed this image, whoever did this image in using blood crushers. Bold move. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. Well, uh, I mean, they could be good. They could be good. Like, that's, that's yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, here's the deal. Uh, I am building, and once I get done with this army, yes, I'm going to be doing the spearhead Vanguard box painting. But like, I have my eye firmly set on Slanesh, like that, yeah. because maybe, maybe this is the, maybe this is the, this is the book, this one. This is it, Tom. This is it. Make no mistake, who you are. This is it. The waiting is over. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, could be time. Um, I mean. Let's hope. Could we get good blood crushers for the first time ever in AOS history? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Okay, let's see. At any rate, for all of you out there, I'm thankful and grateful that you watch this show. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate it. Hit like if you haven't already. Subscribe, do those things. If you want to support the show, there's lots of ways you can do it. Look down below in those descriptions. There's uh, affiliate links to so buy your new hobby supplies, to get your new army ready, all that fun stuff. Uh, there's a merch store down there. You can pick up some some fresh merch if you want to get Tom's little sprite and show your your uh, alliance to Team Tom. There you go. Uh, and there's also, of course, our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. There's also, maybe you're frustrated and want to try a new game. Hey, guess what? Adam and I, we make games. Those are all listed down there. Pick up a fun skirmish game. You can use, we're miniature agnostic. We never retire models. You can use any of your stuff in our games. You're looking for a new home. There you go, right there, buddy. Uh, and we have a new game coming this summer, right? We do indeed. We do indeed. Tom, I was just approving. Well, approving is the wrong word, but Adam and I were, were were like reviewing a bunch of the art today, including the yeah. cover. Yeah. Get pre get hyped. Get hyped, people. It's gonna be a hot one. It's gonna be a hot um, one. I mean, what I'll say is this: I out of all of the games that I've tested, it's the one that I've enjoyed the most. Well, there you go. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. So it's going to be it's going to be a good one uh, for all the rest of you out there. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. As always, we will see you next Wednesday.